The Fellas Fellas Tour is coming this week to St. Louis, Charlotte, Greensboro, Raleigh, Washington, uh, and that's D.C., Pittsburgh, Syracuse, Albany, West Nyack, Edmonton, Jacksonville, Miami, San Jose, Tacoma, Chicago, Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland. More dates will be coming. And also, go to JJ's show uh, at Brooklyn Comedy Club if you're in New York. Uh, next Wednesday. The next Wednesday the, to support JJ and me and Danny will be, both be there. Yeah, we will. Yeah, but more importantly, come to St. Louis. <laughs> we'll be there this weekend. To okay. the okay. Woo! Boys cast. The boys. The fellas. The lads. The bros. The dudes. The homies. The mates. The blokes. The boys. Cast is the show. The dogs. The bunts. The bruvs. Amigos. Everyone to subscribe to the new YouTube channel. We appreciate you. And also, we've heard a lot of people had different criticisms of certain things because uh, we're doing lots of new things, and some people positive, some people negative on things like the intro or whatever. People don't like change. People people don't like change, but also I hear you, and I'll I'll listen to everything. But we are anytime we change something, we're gonna you know give it a month or two and see how he sits or whatever. It's not just like you know what I mean. But the new channel is for starters, and this is the thing people don't sort of realize: the amount that I go through to make sure that this podcast is good and Danny, but me specifically right now, the right now, this, uh, we brought Adam 22 and I've brought, you know, I've been using all my connections to try to get cool interviews, but Luis Gomez, uh, po- he posted. So Adam was like, I'm coming through. And then I kind of messaged him and I was like, yeah, I'll come to, to the boys cast. If you're doing, uh, I, I was like, Oh, if you're doing Legion of Skanks, it makes sense to come here before. Right. Yeah. And then I see Lewis take down his post and he was like, Oh, I put Adam up on the wrong date or whatever. <laughs> so I w- I'm in Vancouver and then I have to, uh, I pull essentially change my flight to do an all night flight back so I could get here legitimately 20 minutes, you know, before he's coming in. Cause he was leaving the next day, which yeah. I had, I would have planned it differently if I knew that that was a thing or whatever. So whatever, basically we made it happen. All night flight. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got a whole bunch of big guests to plan. I'm using all my social capital, whereas Danny doesn't want to use any of his social capital to get Martin Scarelli, the one that he actually... I actually have messaged about it. No, I literally... Uh, okay. No, this week I did actually message about it because uh, Martin Scarelli was on Destiny's... Okay. Uh, uh, I know. Uh, that's yeah, yeah. Well, then I saw him. And I go, well, oh, Danny's so buddy doing is stuff. Martin Screlly's best friend. I know that. Dude, I'm trying. I can't make him do it. Nah, yeah. Imagine I couldn't make these people do it. Then we'd have no <laughs> guess. <laughs> I'm, bringing, I'm bringing people. I can't even figure out Martin Screlly's Twitter because it keeps getting taken this down. This is what I'm dealing with. He doesn't mind. If you, if you want to, he's message on t- Danny and he's say on he needs TikTok to try though. harder. Because I'm I trying. Said, I'm he can come here. And I even said, because a big thing apparently is the legal issues where he's like, I don't, I can't, you know, this is what got him into the mess. Yeah, like yeah, going yeah. on podcasts and saying I know, shit. I know. So I was kind of like, dude, you can, after we do the podcast, you can fucking listen to it if you want. You know yeah, what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, of course. Our thing isn't to like bring him on and being like, do you want to say sorry to anyone? Like, I want to no, fucking no, no. know what it's like in jail and shit. Destiny literally said something on that podcast and like about something like money related. And Scully's like, yeah, I'm not. Like, like he was like, this will get me in trouble. Right? Yeah, and that's like, live. Ours isn't live. Yeah, ours isn't live. It's like, whatever. Mostly, and I was, I've been thinking just nonstop podcasting the last little bit, being like, you know, what's a good, like, what's a good way to, like, should we be going, I feel like we go through articles when someone's really funny and they're our friend, yeah. but if you don't know them it's and they're famous, like, and that's better to kind of, like, get into their stuff. I've been For sort sure. of, yeah. whatever. I've been, either way, we're going through all the stuff and trying to make this the, you know, best podcast that it could be. So I appreciate everyone who listens and subscribes I, and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, we do. But so New York, uh, to get back to here, from Vancouver. Yeah. So I played Vancouver. We did a theater. It was packed, and it was so sick. But so it's on East Hastings Street. And and people who don't know Vancouver, like they talk about, oh, LA has got like Tent City and all this shit. It's like, you have no clue. This is the OG Tent City. It is crazy. Yeah. So I'm there. Joe List is doing the show before. It's like we're both doing one theater, right? Mm. And he's like, he doesn't even want to, he, he wanted uh, someone to help him get out of the car to the venue because he's like, it's too Dude, crazy. when I did that, I did that venue <laughs> uh, maybe like f- four years ago or something and my friend and his wife came and he literally, he goes, my wife doesn't want to walk in. Like she just doesn't want to. That's what a lot of people were saying in the comments. Like people were like, dude, you must know how much of a fan I am that I'll go down to oh, that yeah. area. Oh, hell yeah. So I, I'm, I'm walking by. I for, it's as soon as I get out of the Uber, there's like five people sitting there. Like it's, you know, it's almost apocalyptic. Yeah. And they're all, you know, ah. they're all injecting heroin. They're in injecting their feet. heroin. And then this lady walks up. She goes, You lost, son? <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. She asked me, You lost, son? And I was there in fucking East Hastings 
uh, maybe eight years ago, and I was filming this like funny like I- homeless rap crew video, and we went down there and started filming, and the people go, "What the fuck are you filming?" And then they start chasing us, so we start running, and we have a fucking band of homeless people <laughs> chasing after us. We all went our separate ways. Hayden's there; he's got a camera. And he's running with the camera. Luckily, they, you know, probably only went a couple blocks and they don't. I, it's almost like uh, like a force field. Like they get to the end of East Hastings. And they yeah, go, yeah, yeah. Oh, They can't leave their area. Yeah, the East Hastings, because there's West Hastings, which is like Rich. bad. But yeah, yeah it's, but it's still bad. But you're like, it kind of makes, it's more like New York style. And you got East and it's like, you're like, oh, this is. I try, you, you try to go, I try to go get f- food. And it's like, you're, you're literally, you know, it's, yeah, it's yeah, nuts. It's... One guy comes up to me because the venue's there. So I walk to go to Tim Hortons and I get, uh, uh, you know, five steps. There's like five people shooting up, and they're all kind of like, "What are you? What are you doing?" They don't like you in their area, almost, right? I get around the corner. Someone else, kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm almost uh, on edge. And then one guy goes to me. He goes right from behind. He goes, "Hey!" And I just go, "Oh!" And, I, and then, and then he looks. He goes, "You, Ryan Long?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like, "Oh my god!" So what? He, he was just a normal. That was there. He's a normal. That was just a wacky. Yeah, but wacky I, that was the one where I was like, "This is how it ends." When the guy was the like, aggressive, "Hey!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's wild out there. And dude, you know there's fucking they just made drugs legal there. Oh, well, these people, I, I'm sure that they're making any changes in their behavior. But let's they're not, but they're like Vancouver. Vancouver is <laughs> taking the next step, and they go now. You can literally have like I think you can have two grams of like a mix of coke and meth and all that stuff, and it's not illegal anymore. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. I will say that going back to there and dealing with the flight stuff, Canada, Canada is a, objectively worse. So they. It, the thing is, their airports don't work. Nothing works because yeah. they make all these crazy regulations. So uh, the airports all have like a 10 times bigger line because everything's such a mess at these places, right? Yeah, and they have the random, uh, they kept doing random fucking COVID tests and shit too. They're doing all sorts of random shit. I got my bag searched both ways. The people send me to the, uh, whatever. That, that part's like not even interesting. It's just a gripe about the airport. But you have to wear the mask in the thing. So you basically, as soon as you, you're in the plane without a mask, you get off the Canadian airport you have to put one on and vice versa so you're in a mat in the plane on the way back you have the mask on the minute you step off the plane you're allowed to take it off i know it's just like you know when people say make it make sense yeah it's just and trudeau right now says he's got covid right so it's like the funny part is these people he goes you know i got covid again blah blah and he posts he's like you know i've got my 19 boosters and i'm just back <laughs> like oh and he goes you know good, good, good luck luckily i'm not dead right now from COVID. yeah yeah like if COVID- yeah, also interesting that that fucking he gets covid for like what's this the third time he's had it or fourth time or something right and then now he goes you know what maybe we don't need to uh make people have a vaccine to travel within the country exactly because he goes right? i guess this isn't really helping yeah so. but the, and the, fauci did you see that fauci just got covid oh, like yeah. an hour ago oh he's actually old too that yeah, might not yeah. be good for him no nah, he's got boosters. Dude, he's got he's got the boosters we don't even know about yeah <laughs> Dude, he's, he's got the boosters where he, he does he's the boosters got the, and he eats he's the got needle. the 2028 20, boosters <laughs> he, goes, COVID. he so many boosters he's he fucking eating the needle but yeah it was like I wa- there was five or six things where you are just like things work worse here yeah. just like when you moved here they don't have Venmo there and stuff like that like every, sending money's harder everything's just harder yeah it's, they have Interact yeah, it's ridiculous. So they have uh, <laughs> just a couple quick. Did you things. go through Pearson? We're gonna go through a few was uh, Pearson articles. A nightmare? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. Because you see that thing with there. wit. Took a, wit that's wit. what I said. I did an all nighter and then pulled a layover to get here for. Did you see the thing with Ryan, Ryan Whitney from Spit and Chicklets where he was in uh, the Toronto airport? He was trying to get home and like it was a nightmare to the point where he was making these viral videos that went like super viral. They're all on the news and then like in Parliament they were like, "Hey, can we fix the airport?" Like because like Ryan like literally he made it to Parliament. They were talking about maybe how and hopefully this will have that effect if you're yeah, yeah. Justin Trudeau. well they, they they're saying maybe he helped get rid of the testing someone well i think a lot of the people the all of the people that are you know constantly being like this is crazy yeah do you think maybe like the all the power keeps trudeau looking young like when he seeds a little bit of power <laughs> like he, he he ages in real time you know like he's like fine get rid of them and then it's just like crow's feet just go like <laughs> That's his youth serum. What's his youth serum? Authoritarianism. It's just pa- yeah, it's power. <laughs> Holy shit. They, uh, okay, there are just a couple of funny things, and then we have, a, like, oh, we're gonna, we brought three of the best articles that we're going to go through with before our guests. Only we're, the we're, best. Only the best. The listeners get in the best, the best, <laughs> the best, the best article of mice. <laughs> they had uh, routers, if you know, saw this. So, what? 
Reuters? Is it Reuters Ro- Ro- or Reuters? Ro- Reuters. Reuters? Yeah. I'll tell you, they're fucking... Reuters. That's me and you, Ro- fucking Reuters. Reuters. They did uh, just a quick funny thing. So they posted... You know how people say that like the Ukraine people, there's Nazis or whatever? Yeah. And they posted this thing in Reuters, Reuters, being like, uh, hey... Uh, you know, look at the travesty of, you know, what Ukrainian people have to do with. They're like, this guy, he had to leave his house and he's, you know, uh, with his family in his van. And if you zoom in, he has a swastika tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't know if they took it down, but like immediately everyone caught it. It's like, you don't even have to zoom that much. Like one finger zoom. Yeah. And you see his arms got a fucking swastika on it. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and then the other side. Uh, Not all Nazis, Ryan. Well, I'll, I'll, there's a cop in UK that just went to jail for, uh, did you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We don't even, there's not even really much to say about it other than this, but so this guy goes to jail from, uh, uh, racist, uh, you jokes said, in a uh, group like a me- chat. Yeah. I, but the, none of the articles said how it happened. I think what happened is because it was, I, did I, someone I, rat him? I think he got ratted, but then also I think he was using like cop. his cop phone. His like, so it's like they got him on like you're using like a civil servants like device. So, so you gotta kick any girls out of the group chat for stuff. Kick any girls out of the group chat. Also, if you're gonna like send racist memes, don't do it on your work phone. Okay, that's probably the, a not bad. But idea. going to j- this is the thing with these things because if they whenever they post the memes or whatever, you're like, yeah, that is bad or whatever. But the the, it's like you're not defending the fucking you're not being like I think this is good whatever yeah right? it's like fire it's like, it's like fire do the go, old thing where you just fire you know, him you go to jail for a like <laughs> do you know how do you not be a country where you go we're making laws you're like okay our new law is you can go to jail for making what you consider to be a joke in a group chat and everyone's like sounds yeah that sounds pretty reasonable I mean I to feel me. like we're in the only country where that doesn't really happen like, I feel like every pretty much country is there, you know, because this is the only country that has like. Well, yeah, co- that joke of the guy that went to the Russian speech, prison. Right? Well, that too. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying this is, that was like fucking in the 50s. But I'm saying like, this is the only country in the world that has like codified like free speech, like in I the guess. constitution. Every Like, I mean, Canada to, again, it goes back to like the Jordan Peterson stuff and the Mike Ward where he's like, they're like, well, you don't go to jail. And he goes, okay, well, find me 50 grand. And when I don't pay you, what happens then? It, they, that's everything, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. so it's like this is really the only country that they're not doing <laughs> yeah. that. Either. And then okay, so there's that, and then this is a pretty good fucking uh, Metro UK had a had a banger for LGBT people of color. Racism also impacts how are they perceived and treated by wider society. So people from the LGBTQ plus community who do not have to also worry about racism possess white gay privilege. Of course, and that, yeah, yeah, I know, but it's been taken off where white gay guys, because everyone's been sort of saying white gay guys are out, <laughs> and they were sort of saying like, yeah, you are officially out. And I'm on their side because Danny sent me this article, actually, when he's not not getting us guests, he found some good <laughs> articles. I, he goes, this is probably my favorite because I'm so pissed off about it. And then Daily Beast posted... I can't believe they announced Joker 2 during Pride. This is one of the most... I was saying to you when I messaged you, yeah. I go, I didn't realize Daily Beast was trying to be crazier than Vice. They, Daily Beast is is uh, hold my drink mode, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> honestly, like, pre-Trump, Daily Beast was, like, pretty normal. Yeah. Like, this, what, this was... They were a pretty... And I guess it, it, I, it, it might be like a, a satire death. article, but they are not satirical. Totally. And you're like, it's it, this is in, like... I guess it's maybe like a death rattle kind of scenario where they're just... You know, they're clawing at anything to stay in business. I don't know. The nerve of Todd Phillips to release Joker during Pride. And they go, director Todd Phillips announced a sequel to his polarizing Joker film, which actually wasn't that particularly polarizing. Yeah, that was the one thing. Everybody's (laughs) like, I go like, I thought that was one of those movies where everybody kind of is on board with it. Well, their whole thing is they say it was like the incel anthem. Right, right, right. Yeah, some people were like, yeah. it's the." And what what Daily Beast is not not realizing, where they're saying that Joker makes people incel, uh, you know, radicalized incels. No, Daily Beast makes people... Yeah. Articles like this make people radical. I mean, it's doing as much lifting for sure as the Joker. Right. Yeah, yeah. The Todd Phillips movie didn't do as much, yeah. And they go, the film lit the internet up with jokes and grievances. One pandemic at a time, please. So they're saying the pandemic of incels, they can't deal with this right now. Yeah. Todd Phillips, is, he's out there, he's going to announce a movie. The leader of the incels, Todd Phillips. And now Todd Phillips is yeah, the, the leader, leader of the he's incels. He's a famous director. 
<laughs> you know what happened is one time he said that like, the woke stuff's a little out of control. Yeah, yeah, totally. And becomes the leader the of the incels. Leader of the cells. <laughs> and I mean, like the Joker, I thought made some pretty like good points about, you know, it's, it's all about like mentally ill people like slipping through the cracks. It didn't really have a specific incel vibe. Oh, when I it. watched Joker, the way that it was pitched to me and all the press surrounding it, I thought it was going to be like, you know, uh, let's get a bunch of women, these stupid fucking sluts and put them in a, and then, the, and then everyone's like, and then the Joker wins at the end. Yeah, yeah, totally. Also, it's very New York, like you're living in New York and then the Joker stuff because it's all like the giant super rat and you the go subways like, and then like, and then all the crazy, no, but it's also just like the crazies and people not getting the mental health they need and they're doing all this nut stuff and you're just like, yeah, I mean, I look around. It's very like. Yeah, you're right. It is the, that was like a big theme of all the Batman movies is like the slipping through the cracks. Slipping through the thing. cracks, but you're like, but then you see it really. Yeah, so he said he crashed Pride this year. So they're they're acting like he announced it, like he came and put he a rented, stick in. He rented a white panel van and drove it right through the. Uh, <laughs> he figuratively rented a white he, panel van and drove it right through the pride. Parade. Yeah, and his panel van was shooting out sticks that go in the spokes of the other pride <laughs> fl- parade flag. Some you know some teacher was out there doing her ball gag routine, and he comes out and kicks him off the stage, <laughs> and he goes. <laughs> <laughs> he announced it with a, par- a parade of jokers that he's, go to the he's pride He's cementing parade. up Bottoms assholes and stuff. <laughs> he's putting fucking quick dry cement in their yeah, assholes. Yeah, he has a joker like this is exit only <laughs> asshole shirt on. You know, it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and... <laughs> <laughs> so they're... The craziness to be like... And to be, be honest, if you want to be like, we have this day and the day is all about this. It's like, I probably still wouldn't agree, but it's like... You have a month where no one can release anything that isn't supporting your thing. These and by the way, what totally doesn't have a month? Yeah, and these are also every two- month is a month. Every month is multiple months. Yeah, every oh, they've run out a month, so I think right now it's supposed to be like Asian month as well. Yeah, it's Asian month. It's Gay Pride month. It's Bagel Appreciation month. It's <laughs> there's a lot of months. <laughs> That's your month, huh? Yeah, yeah. What a shame. We can't celebrate in peace. Is nothing sacred? Yeah, the, in their mind, he like marched through the parade. You know, with like a, the biggest flag that was like the incels are back, women belong in cages. Yeah, yeah. It's not even really. If you do think incels, I guess their thing is in their mind, incels just hate everything. But it's really like a woman based kind of thing. Yeah. Also, they're kind of in their minds are thinking he had a meeting with whatever Warner Brothers, whoever does, and they go, "Okay, we're gonna p- announce this in July." And he goes, "No, no." He goes, "We make the announcement in June." Yeah, exactly. And why? Because it's Gay Pride Month. Because no one fucking wrongs me. If anything, <laughs> incels would like lesbians because they're not fucking any man which is at least fair yeah that's that is that is a good point you know what i mean did todd phillips realize the harm he was causing when he announced the news some that's the thing where hey gay people not everything's about you <laughs> the harm the heart like but the think to see this and be like this is targeted no what it is it was it's one guy like at pride he's doing his thing and then uh he's like blowing a guy in like the back of like a thing <laughs> and then the tv's all just, like the lights shut out and the tv's just all go to an empty closet bar <laughs> <laughs> he just has to pop the dick out of his mouth like excuse me <laughs> you think there's any people who are They're doing what in gay pride who are gay jokers and then they go whoa read whoa. the room man <laughs> yeah 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 this is not that type of joker <laughs> that's it no it's the loudspeaker comes on you know what i mean like all of the power just goes out in the whole parade and then the loudspeaker just goes on and goes <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if they laughs like that how does the new joker laugh uh he's just like walking phoenix he doesn't really i don't remember him having a very specific like crazy Did laugh, he even like- pause to think about how the next few years we've just got to sit and also funny that uh hakeem phoenix is like mr like woke boy too right uh, he's pretty. Uh, I'm surprised he, you know, like with you all the him, press. I like that you call him Hakeem Phoenix. <laughs> what is it? Joaquin. Wa- Joaquin. Well, sorry. Hakeem, no, Hakeem's great. Marry him. You can. It's your month. I wish. For the next uh, few years, we've just got to sit, waiting, worrying, dreading when the next release of the Joker 2 news. Because they didn't, I, I, they announced that it's coming out, but I guess maybe they, didn't, they don't know exactly when. So it could hit them at you know, any moment now, they know exactly the date could be. I can't believe this yeah, it is doesn't the feel Daily real. Beast. This is insane. This is like Mamma Mia territory. Or, well, yeah, or that girl who fucking keeps- Your tango's the new one we found. Yeah, yeah or, or, or the girl from- <laughs> Mamma Mia is from, good, You yeah. know, who kept posting like all that wacky shit. Like, maybe oh, she it's incredible. Would. And without the- and without any, are you in the right headspace to receive information that could possibly hurt you? Warning in sight. What a mess. 
So she thinks they should be kind of saying like, hey, obviously finish your pride, get back into a good headspace. Well, how often, how long do you need? Two months to prepare for some news that's might going to, we're not, we're just going to give you the news that there might be news, but we want to make sure you're in the right I mean, I got really bad news for you too, because this is going to be a pretty popular movie. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah this isn't going to be like a, do you know a in and out in a week kind of Do you know thing. a single gay guy that would give two shits? Or gay person? No, because I wouldn't be friends with those people if they were going, I'm, I'm being attacked by the release of the news of the Joker 2. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah. I, could, I can't take that person seriously. How it's not the movie them? that's uh, attacking you even yet. but you're just the announcement. That it might be coming sometime. I mean, imagine how these people are going to feel when the trailer comes out. Well, they're going to, yeah, they're going to essentially lock down. They're at a glory hall and they just lock the glory hall. And then you just hear, <laughs> <laughs> If 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 Todd Phillips really is a piece of shit, he'll release the trailer on January sixth, twenty twenty three. Just a really fun a lot of the January sixth stuff has been kind of interesting because they actually have been sort of uh, uh, people have been pretty vocal about the amount that like the Fed guys were there. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen the, yeah, some Ray of the videos. Epps. Ray Epps was the Ray main. Epps. It's Everybody pre- goes, "Where's the fuck? Why haven't I heard of Ray Epps?" It's pretty crazy though. The guy, there's like ten videos in a row of this guy marching around, being like, "We need to storm the Capitol," and everyone's like. Get out of here. Yeah. Hey, but he got it where he got it going. I mean, it was exactly the same as the fucking G20 or whatever in Toronto where they kept they kept like all these guys were like breaking shit. And then, why do they want that, though? So they can arrest more people? Well, they can disperse. Yeah, because I guess disperse the crowds. real conspiracy is they want it. So then it's bad for Trump. And that's good. Well, for them there's whatever, that, too. But, but there's also like the agent provocateur stuff is when there's a huge crowd. Right, and you want to you want to get can't rid of the beat crowd them up until you, you serve. yeah you can't do anything until they start something yeah. so then you pretend you're one of them start shit and then you clear it up. But I I think that the interesting thing is the January sixth hearings that because they almost won like whoever was you know pro this happening they got everything they wanted they got you know people to point at for the next hundred years. I mean, dude, it's in they had they did this in prime time. It was on at eight p.m. Fucking politicians don't work at eight p.m. Right. So my point is they should have let sleeping dogs lie because now. They're like, hey, let's get an investigation to really find out get what happened and get to the bottom of this. But it's like, they, I feel like they, they don't want that. I mean, this is just a tool for the, this is a, a commercial essentially for the midterm election. This is just like for, uh, for the Democrats. Am to, I crazy where I'm just points. seeing like alternative media where it's it, it actually, this isn't as much of like a thing as I'm seeing. But it feels to me like it is sort of going mainstream where people are like oh shit the fucking cia did this uh i don't think no because they don't talk about dude, dude they had 20 so the first one they, they was on six channels or whatever they had 20 million viewers and then they did one this monday 10 million dropped in half for the next one that's how little people that, that's yeah. how quickly dude you know maybe that's why they've dropped out because they were like these guys they did they were supposed it. to do one t- uh, tomorrow and they canceled it so I am a little up. bit right then, yeah, maybe. Well, the ratings are plump. Dude, you know and they the did ratings. the same numbers as an episode of NCIS. <laughs> NCIS I can't, stinks. NCIS it's the only, only cop show I don't like. Dude, I think. but it's like they had six fucking uh, networks broadcasting this, and they did combined what one network was doing of just like a new episode of NCIS. Wow. Isn't that wild? Yeah. No, also, it's wild that you're like, NCIS does still does 10 million... Like, have you not had enough of NCIS if you're <laughs> a fan have. of NCIS? NCIS is the worst cop show. <laughs> The guy's so ridiculous in NCIS. It, it's like he they just they just make him so much the ultimate guy or something that's like in a way that's really annoying. And they all they they uh, they uh, they're never not making wise cracks, right? And they're all pretty crappy. I mean, they're I've never seen playing. an episode of it, but I just can't believe it's I'm a cop show guy, you know. I can't that. believe it's still on. Yeah. The um okay, so this is what they said. As to be expected, the reactions for Joker 2 arrived quickly and they were for sure harsh. And uh, as they should be, don't get me wrong, one pandemic at a time, uh, one user quoted. So what they're saying here, their point is that like, and rightfully so, Twitter fucking let them have it, right? And then she's (laughs) like, look at these eight people that I follow that were mad at fucking the Joker releasing during Pride. (laughs) And you go... It, they, so in their mind, like Todd Phillips is really feeling the burn. You know what I mean from the Twitter users. These people must them. hate Halloween, huh? <laughs> Halloween must be literally the worst. worst yeah, can crime. you believe they had the nerve to do Halloween in the same year as Pride? <laughs> <laughs> That's their next article. Yeah, <laughs> they should at least do Halloween every two years to let people, you know, uh, get <laughs> let people have at least yeah, like, just a like, year off. You know, twenty there's, orgies there's, in between. They're fucking going through so much. So Daily Beast is definitely creating jokers. 
And uh, so this is your tango because your tango, uh, Tony did. Uh, <laughs> he did a bit of a deep dive on your tango. Yeah. Yeah, uh, we got we got a uh, me and him were just going back and forth on <laughs> this edit for the simp video. But me and Danny, if you've ever tuned in Monday for a video that I do, the one that's coming out this Monday is a, a fucking a masterpiece a that we made, which means it'll bomb. But it's the funniest <laughs> thing we've made in a really long time. It's a reality show uh, that's a simp household, and we did it exactly like the reality shows and stuff like that. Uh, simps live in a house. I highly recommend that. But yourdango.com, There's some opinion pieces that are fucking. A banging. Oh yeah, and uh, this one, <laughs> this one, and if I will say, because I've been uh, and I've been getting uh, to be honest, more people agreeing, but obviously some people are mad because people are hyped up about all the you know drag queen stuff, and I've. Uh, I've been sort of, um, you know, shitting on conservatives a bit, saying, you know, because libs of TikTok's basically become uh, Sean King for conservatives a little bit. Yeah. But I've also said that, yeah, I also like wouldn't bring a kid to a drag show. But without even getting into that, I will say I'm, I have no uh, problem pointing out parents when they're being crazy. <laughs> I will still do it. Yes. It's just generally when the whole internet's saying something, you go, okay, I don't know if that one needs to be said right now. I will never censor myself in front of my kid because my kids deserve the truth. And it's this woman being like, "There's you should talk exactly around your children the same way that you do around your friends. Yeah. I will say... Uh, she she she's a bit on the nutty side, but I do kind of take a tact when I like with with kids, where I kind of do do talk to them like adults. I don't say what I say to adults. You, well, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, you're a robot. Yeah, I can't imagine you being like, "Hey, little I guy." I honestly find kids like I always. I don't know if you remember when you were a kid. I always hated when I got treated like a fucking. Kid. But you are. Well, you're making a different point. A though, different point. Yeah, 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 I know. I'm not making. You're say, point. you're saying that I talk the same way yeah she's saying that she's like, I she's like yes i was getting stuff. yeah she's like i was getting railed by this is what she said i know <laughs> she's like me and my friend were having these conversations about stuff and then the kid walks in and her friend goes and uh your friend goes are you sure we oh i guess we won't talk about this and the kid she goes continue continue and she goes anyway i guess i was sucking them off and <laughs> so i was sucking both of them off and uh and then he goes and yeah <laughs> so she, yeah, I, w- I wonder if like, it's, I, I wonder if it's one of those things though where she's like just her kid bugs her and she goes yeah it's just like the only way to get her out of here it feels like it <laughs> the only way to get out of her hair is to talk about gross shit well, someone around her told her hey not around the kids and that prompted her to write this article like so i'm being censored <laughs> that's it is it's the most censored woman in, yeah, yeah, yeah. in history the she's the she's the Alex Jones of talking about fucking getting <laughs> blown around kids. <laughs> and she goes, so what she meant is that I what I she oh, so this person told her that not around kids. Um, so what is it that she meant when she said that I live my life out loud? And would that mean that others live their lives in quiet? Because her friend goes, I know you just your friends being diplomatic. She's like, Oh no, you just live out loud, but just maybe not around the yeah, eight yeah. year old. Reminds you know me of I mean? uh, Eastbound and Down with Will Ferrell. You know, with the kid, he goes, Let him watch. <laughs> <laughs> kind of is that. Yeah. My friend and I continued with our allowed conversation in which we covered sex, lust, men, women, past regrets, future desire, future desires. She says she's covering. So I was like, I guess a list of guys she wants to suck off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I want to drip hot candle wax. She will stay. <laughs> Do you want, hey, the kid a, stays. So here's who's on mommy's hall pass. <laughs> yeah. My friend and I continued with our loud conversation, which covered those topics. Our words became stories, and each new tale spoke of a life that was discovered in both profanity and purity. Real life in all its throbbing ugliness. She, <laughs> she writes like she's writing like a Danielle Steele novel. She is. It's yeah. a tale. Or a Lex Steele film. <laughs> ugliness in real life and all its heart stopping beauty my daughter entered the room and the conversation did not veer off topic you know i was lusting for this guy i sucked him off <laughs> the cu- fucking dad is dripping down my face yes it was your father so i think uh i would say that that's a bit much yeah you go maybe ta- you maybe take it easy with the conversations about uh the throbbing boners in front <laughs> i mean there is such a thing as too much progress you know <laughs> it's not it's good in small doses but that's why these articles are uh, uh, and this is kind of what i was thinking about a lot of these articles it's become these people being like 
they they can never ever be wrong about anything, right? Because as long as it's in their mind somehow attached to like progressivism or yeah, whatever, of course. If some mm-hmm. if it's any way attached to like you know sex positive or you know the gay parade, there's you could never be wrong no matter what you do, right? Yeah, you're like you're and you're a square if you want to be like, oh, you can't handle this. You're I don't like, even you're think they literally say square. Talk- I think they say you're a bigot. Well, that too. Well, I think it starts with that maybe, and then if, yeah, if too much pushback, then it's like you're a bigot. But if you're no, like, it's like but you're. Like, I don't want to hear about you getting gaped by dad you're, you're a, like oh yeah, i'm sorry <laughs> you're a wacky mom is what it is yeah so you're you're like a wacky woman yeah, yeah. why don't you just be like a is regular it, wacky mom and fuck all your friends kids there you go or for your kids friends there you go well you can do whatever you want but it's like is it that cr- it's like a you know we got him 22 and he's born but it's like i'm sure he's not gonna be like yeah this one's for four-year-olds yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I would be the, and it's also funny too, because it's like, this is where they say, you know, like, well, you try to say it's like, who's a square or whatever, but it's like, there's nothing worse than the mom that's too much information. Like if you're the kid, you're not like my mom's um, hip. You're like, my mom's embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, this girl's going to If gonna my literally... mom was talking about this stuff when I came home, if my mom was having a conversation loud with her friends and I brought my friends into play and I brought my friends oh. into play video games and then she's like, oh yeah, you got to suck the fucking nuts. <laughs> You know, so I'm, you know, I'm grabbing the nuts. You ever do the finger in the guy's ass? She's going, I'd be like, and my mom's like, oh, what, you square, man? I'd be like, mom, I promise you that, like, we're, you're this the nuts. one that's a, like a, yeah. a nerd in this scenario. Yeah. Also, this woman is, her daughter is 100% going to be like a trad wife, fucking going to church every Sunday. Like, this is what you're going to turn her into. It's also a don't grow up situation a little bit too, right? Yeah. You want to be like, you're like, I don't want to be the mom. I want to be like my kid's friend. You know, yeah, I want to be like the cool mom. This is the mom that would be like, you know what? But there if you're is gonna a have place- sex. If you're gonna have sex at 11 years old, I'd rather you do it around me. Yeah, in, on totally. film. But there is a place <laughs> for that because everybody in a friend group needs the one kid whose mom is like, yeah, just come over to drink, and everybody just <laughs> drink, do we'll, so we'll yeah, we'll give you guys booze That's to help true. yourself. And you're like, we're 13. You go, the only fine. problem is my mom will describe her interactions <laughs> with. Yeah, yeah, Andrew, yeah. who was over last <laughs> night, and yeah, and uh, we're gonna. No, I mean, she's gonna be having some drinks, dude. With it's us. literally the feminist mom schedule. Yeah. She goes, "That was a dicking down <laughs> for the ages." The mom's coming in, walking funny, and she goes, "No rubber either, eh?" <laughs> she comes in with a fucking just giant like butt plug. She goes, "You ever seen one of these in action?" Yeah. My daughter entered the room and the conversation didn't veer off topic. Lust was still at the forefront of the exchange. Lust is a funny one, too. She's like, so I'm lusting after this guy. It's so, so I just went to say, hey, mom, did you get the, the hot dog from 7-Eleven? Funny thing, I was lusting over the guy at 7-Eleven. I almost fucking took my titties out right there and just fucking threw them on the guy's fucking cank. <laughs> okay, mom, Lust. thanks. Speaking of hot dogs, you ever just lust for a fucking... 12 incher i was gonna say i actually lust probably more for food than non the non-food things the lot that is have you ever had a girl you're dating that tries to do the fake lust thing and where you kind of feel like everyone's putting you know that oh like you know rip trying to rip we gotta rip oh, off each other's yeah. clothes is that would lust i is? probably had it a few times where it felt real but I'll, a lot of the times when the, the girls try to play like a character of like a romance girl, yeah, like, yeah i just like just stop this i thought you were gonna say have you ever got a, a girl who tries to do like the whipped cream or hot fudge or something i like, hate all that at least like, I don't. I don't like. Goes, oh, you want whip? Like, I don't know whose idea what that was. Where you go, it's hard to. If you're cream, really drunk, you can get into. I, I can get into certain areas, definitely. But it's like, it's, it's some when it feels forced to me. I feel like one of my biggest like things that I mean, it has to be forced because unless it. you're like doing shit in the kitchen. Like it has to be forced because you go. Oh, let me just go grab some stuff. And that, like, that's what I mean. It sort of take that. All that stuff takes me out of it. Like unless you have a mini fridge by your bed. Yeah. yeah. Let me just fucking pull out the accoutrements. I do still do it though. Like if you're dating someone, and you come. You know, you're gone for two weeks. I still do the whole thing, but it's for them. Yeah. I do the. Oh, I've been. I missed you so, uh, darling. I miss this. I miss it. I've <laughs> yearned for you. <laughs> yeah, you go. I miss them damn my fucking titties so much. <laughs> I've been yeah yeah I've yearned for you but I would probably if there was kids kicking around I would wait for the kids to come around being like kid 
<laughs> do not go to your room. I've been yearning for your mother. But you're right, though. That's what she is. She wants the romance tale. Yeah, she wants like her husband to like read a poem. Remember, like dudes used to do that. They would be like, this girl specifically doesn't want a poem though. She wants her husband to come in there and be like, I'm gonna fucking flip you over. <laughs> That's them at the dinner table. Yeah. So the kid's sitting at the dinner table. Yeah, he fucking clears <laughs> off everything. He goes, <laughs> I can't wait. You go, All right, with this shit yeah, yeah, again. Yeah, when you flip off the Can table. I eat in the living room where I can watch TV? And I go, Sure. Go, I'm going to fucking dick you down so good. The kid's <laughs> there eating his cereal. <laughs> like, okay. Can you wait till I go to school? Uh, yeah, the teacher, they should probably have their like, role playing outfits and like, Mom, why are you dressed as a ballerina? Because your dad's gonna fucking yeah, you're gonna light me up. <laughs> you're gonna want to go play in the park. <laughs> no, that you see, you keep saying that, but she doesn't want the kid to go play in no, the I park. No, she doesn't. No. Well, yeah. <laughs> hey, kid. I, I'm, so I'm dating this. I just met this new guy off uh, uh, Adult Friend Finder, <laughs> uh, and I'm sending him this message. You mind if I uh, run it by you? So first, I want to fucking flip you over, and then I'm gonna suck <laughs> you off so fucking good. <laughs> I'm gonna be fucking dripping and stuff. Also, I feel like because Adam 22 is on, like if we fucking lose our monetization and all this stuff for the episodes, it is what it is. Yeah, (laughs) it is what it is. (laughs) If there isn't ever an episode to fucking. Yeah, I'm going to fucking take you down and drill you. So, anyways, I'm thinking about sending them that. What do you think? (laughs) Can I finish my homework? Yo, mom, you're blocking the fridge. I just wanted to grab some juice. Yeah, mom, I just wanted to grab a cookie. (laughs) Think funny thing about a cookie. I ripped off my clothes. Lust was at the forefront of the conversation. My friend noticed that I didn't censor my conversation to suit what she assumed were my daughter's sensibilities. That would be (laughs) off-putting. Your friend, your friend, yeah, if you were at someone's house and they're just like, yeah, so I fucking, this guy was dicking me right down, right? Just fucking proper dicking, right? And then this (laughs) kid comes home, she goes, so anyways, you're like, and she's like, yeah, yeah, I see. So anyways, his friend fucking walks in. (laughs) kids rolls her eyes yeah the kids like i've heard this a million times yeah right? i get it mom you're a fucking whore she's also probably she probably is also it's not only um uh it's not only about this stuff she's probably also you know uh, we actually have a video coming out uh with me and nima was california dad versus immigrant dad and the you know the california dad's like you know you're six years old it's about time you know about pegging and the yeah, immigrant yeah. dad's like why, why are you asking me about such a toxic question? <laughs> Who are you hanging out with? Like all that kind of stuff. Sorry. But it is, uh, <laughs> she's probably also saying like, you know, she's probably having her like geopolitical conversations with her like four year old as well. You know what I mean? Like there was, a- I mean, they're literally like fucking, they're knitting pussy hats and they're going right. to the marches. No, and- I was thinking this is making me laugh. The idea of like the, you know, whatever the California mom kind of person, but like she has campfire stories and she has the kid around and she was like, and this man, his face was completely orange. <laughs> <laughs> With the flashlight? Yeah, yes, exactly. Was completely orange. He was a Cheeto. He was he was half man, half Cheeto. So she's she's like under her bed and she's like, Mom, I'm scared of the orange man. And she goes, You should be scared of the orange man. We're all a little scared of the orange man. And guess what? There's a chance that the orange man comes back in 2024. Oh, no! No, no, please. Yeah, the kid wakes up in the middle of the night. Can I sleep in your bed? I had a nightmare about the orange <laughs> man again. I had a nightmare about the orange man. He's, he has, he's a six foot three with hands the size of a little boy. <laughs> How good is that? The- and the hair of a doll. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he has, he's the face of a man and the hair of a doll. This is Chucky. And no matter how much evidence he's provided about the election, he cannot be stopped. (laughs) He doesn't believe. There is no group that he won't attack. (laughs) Mom! No! The orange man is under my bed! He's everywhere. He's in the ether. He's on the internet. (laughs) He's on Truth Social. And then she turns on CNN, and the CNN's like... The orange man's coming back. He's got supporters. And she's like, Mom, it says half of the country. It says the 100 million, 150 million people are supporting the orange man. <laughs> the orange man has an army of orange men. She has, yeah, the orange man has a whole army of orange men that's yeah. going to break into the house. Going to fucking take you to re-education camps. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, the orange man. 
But or or it's one of those kids that's just so weathered from having a mom like this. Uh, yeah, they just ignore it. They go, it's- yeah, you yeah, the worst. No, she's like, she's like, oh fucking, uh, took this guy home. The kid's like, you know, six years old, smoking a cigarette. <laughs> What's he packing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just like fucked up your kids so badly. Yeah, yeah the like, kids like forced to be an adult. At six. He's just weathered. You know what I mean? The kids there chiseling like a, a fucking old, uh, you know, piece of wood with a stick, <laughs> smoking a pipe. Like, <laughs> you have a nice piece. <laughs> Did you come D- dipping? Did you get yours? <laughs> yeah, the kid. Yeah, the kid get goes dipping. Mom, Mom, where's my dip? And she goes, same place I always put it. <laughs> but you get yours. That's what the kid says. <laughs> <laughs> I've always shunned. I've always shunned the idea that some irrational society dream of life. I'm supposed to watch my words around my kid as if he's some sort of fragile bubble that will pop at the moment. Free thinking and expressive passion enter his psyche and atmosphere. That's the other thing too. Like, I mean, again, you're allowed to fucking raise your kid crappy if you want to, I guess. But yeah. uh, it is. Uh, I don't think if you re- anyone who knows anything about what I'm not like, we're giving parenting advice or anything like that. But like, I think it's one oh one of like not fucking up your kid being like, don't put your issues on them. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Well, that seems like that's uh, easier like, said than like done. This is the type of people. woman that like if she was uh, breaking up with her father, she'd be like, but oh, she doesn't you get every piece of information. Yeah, but father, she doesn't see it on. as issues. She probably grew up where her parents were. She's like, my parents never talked about how they fucked all the time and all the gross shit. They right. Did. So my kid and I grew up She's like, I'm all weird about this, so then now I have to be over the top, and then your kids are just going to be the opposite. The kids are going to be like your parents. Yeah, true. It's one thing when they're older, too. We, we know a buddy that goes to strip clubs with his dad. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking weird. The weirdest is you ever see stuff where like some guy gets for his son's like eight, 16th or 18th birthday, gets him a prostitute. Like, that's uh, Anthony uh, Kiedis in his books that his dad got him a prostitute when he was like 14 yeah, or something. Yeah, that's fucking... Weird well, shit. his dad was like a drug addict, like biker type. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I but guess that, that's uh, here's the best thing: that dad if doesn't have a fucking isn't writing a blog, a parenting blog. That's yeah, yeah, what the, yeah. that's what makes this funny. Like, it, what makes this is funny is she's like so like hyped up that she's vindicated to write an article of like you're crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like the dad who got his son a prostitute at 14 probably isn't like Yeah, everybody should do this. He's just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man, fucking born I'm a in, fucking born, drug addict biker. Yeah, born in the streets is what we do. Yeah. All right. Well, that was little Wayne had the same thing, yeah. Uh but yeah, no, this is I want to know what other fucking great parenting advice she has. I've never dumbed down concepts to her. When we talk about well-rounded children, my tendency is to think about the balance, which is half SpongeBob, half real life stories of real people in their lives. So that's okay. That's it. Half an hour of uh, SpongeBob. And now (laughs) let me tell you about the best fuck I ever had. (laughs) Oh yeah. You get, you got, you get your fix of SpongeBob. No, she watches her SpongeBob and she's got a timer and then she just comes and shuts off the TV. (laughs) It's time to talk about banging. Yeah, exactly. So I've nev- I've been told, take it to the other room. Let's not have this conversation in front of the kids. So it's like every one of her friends is like, can you see? Yeah, every person's normal. <laughs> and they go, every person. They go, knows, we like, see what you're doing with this. Yeah, and please. Like, just like, if you want to do this in front of your kid, it's like, you know, you don't need to talk about fucking dildos in front of my kid. <laughs> We'll talk about it later, but not in front of the kid. <laughs> that's re- that's really funny to me that she's like, this is a piece about how everyone in her life is wrong. Yeah. Every and parent they always ever are. Met. Yeah, they always are. All the other moms don't want me to have my tits out on the soccer field, apparently. <laughs> she's literally the feminist mom. Yeah, she's the feminist mom. And then the last one, the TikTok star. This one is just a, just a fun one for everybody. This famous TikTok star uh, had this like viral thing where she's kind of, she has a gripe to air out. And the gripe is that she was uh, she was turned away from a horse ranch because she's too fat, right? <laughs> <laughs> and she's not happy with the horse people. Oh, I can't imagine she would be, right? Yeah. I can't imagine a chick showing up and uh, being like, hey, you're uh, a little heavy for this giant horse. What was that? Who's uh, Artie Lang's book, Too Fat to Fish? Yeah, yeah. Well, her book would have been like, Fishing's Fat Phobic. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing is, too, because she's like, oh, man, and then people are like, well... So do you hate animals? Then? Yeah, exactly, right? Usually, because they said in the thing that there's a fifteen percent of the you're supposed to be fifteen um, percent of the horse's weight. So of the or well, less, yeah, yeah. So of the horse, you're more than one pounds, You could be one fifty. Yeah. So yeah, your thing is like, 
Uh, wh- well, what do you want to happen if uh, you're too big for the horse? Bigger horses. That horse must have been fucking. When she started walking <laughs> in, the horse was just looking at yeah, bigger horses. Yeah. No, the horse was just like fucking starts whistling, being like trying to look away. Yeah, yeah, Hopefully yeah. You pick a different one. Like, <laughs> yeah. Every- <laughs> Can you not whistle either? No. Really? Both of us can't whistle? <laughs> Fuck, we're idiots. No, I suck at whistling. I've tried to learn too. What a bummer. You're a musician. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> Fuck, we can't even make that joke. But you're right. <laughs> She's there, the 10 horses, all 10 of the horses. Yeah. Like, just <laughs> looking at, all, they're all looking around. They're like, yeah. they're kind of look, <laughs> nodding Ooh. to the other horse. They're like, this guy right here is. Yeah. That's, that, that don't, guy. don't make eye contact with her. You'll be at the fucking glue factory <laughs> later. No, they want to be at the glue factory. They prefer that. They go, fuck it, take me to the glue factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the horses' water bins just they're like Jurassic Park <laughs> stuff, and then they go. <laughs> That's so uh, funny. The idea that the horses have like a few customers that they yeah. just know when they <laughs> walk in. <laughs> they go, it's "Gonna be one of those days, huh?" Uh, the horses sort of tired out. He goes, "Ah, oh, fuck. I hope it's a light ride today. Hope we get like a you know Japanese fucking or a crew. kid or just, yeah, a kid you know, or a ja- you know some fucking Asian tourists would be nice." And then this girl, <laughs> 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 fucking Yoko body Zuna. body positive TikTok star, <laughs> comes in wanting her horse ride. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, she goes in a statement. In her TikTok videos, the ranch didn't mention her by name, but broadly apologized to anyone who's offended, which the horse would have been offended, definitely, if it had to ride. I mean, is this any different than you need to be this tall to ride the ride? Well, good thing that you mentioned that. So they also have a problem with the weight limits on rides because their thing is like, well, they should just make rides bigger and elevators bigger, whatever, right? And recently, there was a case of that, which- They need to make rides bigger? Or have a bigger weight limit, oh, right? But isn't that... Well, if they say, they're like, hey, you can't be <clears throat> fucking bigger than 300 pounds to ride the Gravitron or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then their take on that is like, you're going to make... these racist? Well, they're, yeah, they're saying the sec- made people who made... Ableist? Like, if you can't make it for someone that's 500 pounds, then maybe you shouldn't make it at all. Because <laughs> you're not ready to be a ride yet, are you? <laughs> because there's lots of people that are that. That's yeah. kind of, I think, what their take on it is, right? Yeah. But there was a kid recently that did do that uh, and he was on a ride, one of the ones that goes up and then falls down. And people were posting the video on TikTok or on sorry on Twitter. And I watched it, and they show that it goes up, and the kid's chair just falls off the ride, and he just falls to his death. And I'm like, fuck, I can't. That's one of those things where I was watching this, and I'm like, this is off, but you can't fucking you know call someone names wh- or something. And why Pretty did he, why did it break? Because he was too heavy, or because he, he was, was small? well. I mean, the, the, apparently people said he's like 40 pounds overweight uh, over the limit, which, I mean, they should maybe leave a bigger, uh, I don't know. I don't know who's at fault or whatever, but maybe, the, I mean, if there's a difference between being like 400 pounds overweight and being like, you know, yeah, he was just a big, I don't think this was like a morbidly obese, you know, it was just a bit, oh, okay. Just, just like a big guy, big kid, you know? I mean, like you, your joke, they weigh you to get on a fucking airplane. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes you need to do that. There's a reason. Yeah, the small ones, they have to do it. Yeah, they made a Curb Enthusiasm episode. Yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. Well, it was pretty nuts, right? Yeah, they go, so it's fat phobic to not, you know, put this animal through hell sort of thing. <laughs> I think all the horses were playing dead. That's what I'm thinking. The video received <laughs> over 1.5 million views. The caption reads, I've rode horses before and have never had this issue. She asked. So she says she's, you know, rode some bigger horses. But I guess maybe those those horse places don't play by the rules. You yeah, know what well, I mean? they go, we don't have horses that size. <clears throat> or or they have the roided, horses, Yeah, we don't right? have the roided out horses that you're used to. And one block, there is a guide to how much weight a horse can carry. The guide states a rider should not be 15% more than the horse's weight. There is also a list of options for the best horse breeds for plus size riders. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it was the wrong breed. She breed. needs like a Clydesdale or something. But yeah, like for you to go online, I mean, there's not really like there's no, this is a pretty cut and dry case. It was like, yeah, you went to a place that you were too fat for the horses. Like, I guess that sucks. But you're like, yeah, she's mad that they weren't like more apologetic or something like that. Like, okay, maybe we can tie two horses together and then have you sort of straddle the. I two mean, of them. I know, she she says that they nobody told her, but I'm like, I'm sure their website says somewhere or whatever. I don't know. It's like to be honest, like if I was 400 pounds. I on I don't know how I think they said she was like you know two some two, yeah three she was bill, almost me. three bills or whatever yeah, but it's like to be honest I would feel bad about riding an animal if I was like eighty pounds overweight dude I rode a fucking elephant and I was like I'm never doing this again. you probably feel bad going on top of girls yeah <laughs> they just fucking get flattened did so, you read an ele- rode an elephant in Thailand it was I was like never riding an animal ever again why they hate it. First really? off, so I don't think like they like. I don't think they like it, and I was just like, "This, I just hate this. I fucking 
hated the whole thing. So you felt like this is kind of mean. I felt it was mean. They're like, you know, I don't, they're, they don't probably treat them the best. I'm sure horses may be a little different, but I'm just like, I'm horses, not. some of them get treated like queens. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them do. And, but I was just like, I'm done with this. I'm not. Remember that documentary about the guy that was breaking all the horses legs and stuff like that for the insurance money. No. Oh, it was on that one. Well, you watched the one about the soccer team and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But it was on. Oh, that, that was like that. Well, the last one was it was a documentary about basically they were all like mobbed up and there was all these people that would insure their horses and then go like fucking break the horse's legs and shit. Well, that was like an that. episode of The Sopranos when Tony bought oh, the horse with fucking uh, so bad. What was it? Uh, I can't remember who he bought it with. But then they the horse <laughs> was lame and then they burned down the fucking whole thing to kill the horse to get the insurance money. Yeah, torture of animals, like, I feel like, is harder to watch even. And I think the reason is because they don't know what's going on. Torturing humans is brutal, but it's also, like, it, there's not this, like, extra level of why is this even happening. Yeah, for sure. It's, like, some maybe, like, it's almost like torturing a baby or something where you're, like, it can't help. Not that it can help, but you know what I mean. I yeah. think it's, like, viscerally. I mean, I mean watching any torture in... to me is, like, watching anything like that is, like, even in movies, it's, like, ugh. But when it's obviously, it's worse when it's, like, a baby or a woman or, like, an animal or something. Yeah. Ugh. I like my torture. I just like just a dude <laughs> torturing another dude. <laughs> yeah. The way God intended. With a fucking, yeah. With the, And I like to see him in a uh, bondage outfit. And I like <laughs> to see him in a wrecked mask. penis. Yeah. Um, the plus size riders had a thing. Bader, who has been candid about her recent patient, outpatient treatment for her eating disorder, declined to comment further on the industry. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of it. She shows up. She's like, I got a burger in hand. She's like, cur <laughs> like currently eating. He's got no, a do you have a comment? She goes, no comment. Get out of my face. No, no. I'm saying she shows up to the horses. She's got like a bucket of pork oh. rinds. You know what I mean? <laughs> she says, a, just like a bucket of fried chicken. Yeah, she goes, like, Let's ride. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, <laughs> so which horse am I on? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure. Any big girl, that is their worst nightmare to go to anything in public and be like, hey, you're too fat to do this. Go yeah, on. but it's not a reality check because it's no. like, if anything with the influence, this is the opposite where they have this happen and they're just like fucking sick. That's more content for me to gripe. <laughs> yeah, about. of course. Of course. Yeah. She goes, oh, this is going to be a fucking viral video right here. <clears throat> I want to ride that one. <laughs> <laughs> I posted for a reason, and that's because me being denied the ride to horses. So uh, <laughs> it did say at one point, she said that one of the things she was the most mad about is that they were, she thought that she was laughed at by the owner and she wasn't treated good. But, uh, and obviously if you went there, the owner, and she goes, I want to ride the horse. And the owner goes, ah, hey, Tony, <laughs> this, this woman right here thinks she wants to ride the horses. You want to ride the horse? Ah! Hey, Jimmy, get Jimmy in here. Get Jimmy in here. Hey, Jim, she thinks. Yeah, obviously, if that happened, she's but, laughing at it. You go, yeah, I don't need, need to laugh the at it. The best would be like, no, we weren't, la lady, no, no, no. Well, that's a big misunderstanding. We weren't laughing at you. We were laughing at the new Ricky Gervais special. And she goes, what? <laughs> yeah, we were it's watching. It's worse. <laughs> we had the new Ricky Gervais special on the <laughs> company TV at the horse the break room. <laughs> the break room at the horse room. The no, fucking uh, horse's legs are going to be in the break room if they let it ride. Okay. Hey. Let's ride. Boom, 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 boom. All right. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break here to tell you about NordVPN. And if you are living in 2022 and you don't have a VPN right now, what are you, crazy? You're watching TV shows that are only available in your area. I mean, I use it personally. I mean, the government spying on you? Well, for uh, one of the biggest things that I use the VPNs for is if I'm out of town and I don't want my local news on my browser to be from that, or if yeah. I want to watch something in Canada that they're like not available, you know, there's lots of different of things that I use for. You want to so, watch CBC Gem. You want to watch CBC Gem. From the comfort or of your home in America. more importantly, you're in a different country and you don't want to watch CBC Gem, or you're in buttfuck nowhere and you don't want their local news clogging up your, you know, Google or whatever it is. Yeah. There's a million other things, but that's one of the reasons. I mean, on, on top of the protection issue and all that sort of stuff, let Big Tech get your information over my dead body, Big Tech. Hell nice no. try, Big nice Tech. Nice try. Nice try, Big Tech. It's easy to use. Connect with one click or enable auto-connect with zero-click protection. 
5,500 plus servers in 60 countries. So you find a server near you to for a uh, server near you for better speed or to connect to a faraway location, a faraway location, or to freely explore the internet. Amazing speed. It's confirmed by the speed test, which is another huge benefit. NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there, which is huge. Six devices on every major platform: Windows, Android, iOS, Mac, I, Mac OS, Linux. Even your Android TV supports NordVPN. So you can get access for anywhere, movies, anything like that. Don't miss your favorite content from home when you're traveling abroad. It's one click over a map, click a location, and you'll be connected within seconds. Very easy to use. You can find services available at a lower price if they price them differently in different places. A platform isn't available in your country. Well, you just change your virtual location. No more bandwidth throttling based on traffic type since NordVPN encrypts all traffic. The inter Your internet service provider can't slow down your streaming speed. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to NordVPN slash BoysCast to get a huge discount. And this discount is pretty nuts. The VPNs uh, don't mess around when they're giving discounts for people to join. Discount off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free in addition. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. That is exclusive. Grab the NordVPN deal, nordvpn.com slash boyscast. Try it risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee with the promo code BOYSCAST. We're bringing in the fucking biggest guests, and we got the new Patreon episode every week. Big moves are being made on this, and Adam was nice. He had me on uh, No Jumper when I went down there, and we've kind of kept in touch, and fucking uh, anyone who follows, what an interesting dude, oh. and then flew back for this interview overnight, slept fucking two hours tops on a plane crappily. So, without further ado, bring in the man, the legend, Adam22. Adam22. Ryan. Doing the New York podcast tour. We're here. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think that, uh, the, well, the kind of stereotype is that the LA podcasters are softer. I don't think I put you in that category being like a hip hop podcaster, but in the comedy world, that's sort of the stereotype. Interesting. I never thought about that, but I mean, it's definitely like a tougher city in general. So I guess, yeah. I guess I would assume that, you know, like you really got to be able to like socially navigate the world to live out here. Whereas uh -huh. in LA, you can just kind of be carted back and forth between your job yes. and your big ass house. And it's so easy to like lose your coping mechanisms. Yeah. You're not around people. And then also, I think there's also a thing where people in Hollywood, even when they kind of have careers like that are completely self-built there's a part of them that's still like yeah but i'm gonna be in movies and stuff right yeah. <laughs> so it's like maybe i'm not gonna say the wildest shit me and dave and key just stood on the corner after we ate food and we were there was like a couple skater dudes who were like fans i guess like they definitely knew me and wanted to take pictures and stuff and nice. then we just kind of all ended up standing there smoking and talking for like 10 15 minutes and i was just like i don't know when the fuck the last time i like just yeah. hung out with some random dudes was like <laughs> but i'm in the lower east side and everybody's just right on fucking top of each other and it's weird as shit it's you must have a lot of that though where people just punish you yeah, it's all right. No, nah, but they're cool, though. For the most part, they're, like, really cool. Or they don't try to take too much time. You don't get the people who be like, hey, can I come on your show? Oh, yeah, I definitely get that. Just but, 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 like, not even people day? who are, like, doing anything. They're just like, yeah. it just would be sick if... Pe people will say, do you ever up? think about just having a random guy in your podcast? <laughs> <laughs> or they'll say, like, yo, like... And, and they pull out their phone and they start showing you pictures of them in the club with the game one night. And, like, <laughs> this is the song from eight years ago with the Migos. And it's fucking mind-blowing, like, the, the dots that they try to connect to be like, you, you <laughs> yeah, know yeah. this guy. Like, but the other day I was in the mall and I had a dude just come up to me and he's like, it's infinity, bro. And I'm just like, I don't know, man. And he's just like, y'all remember me from five, six years ago? Infinity! And I'm just like, Thinking in my head, like, I've probably met, like, 10 rappers named Infinity. <laughs> yeah. and, it's, but he's, like, in front of his fucking girl, and I could tell that, like, she's fucking bummed on me not recognizing him, too. And oh, was, yeah, he just took an L in front of the girl. Not to make this podcast about how I'm semi-internet famous, you know, but... I think everyone knows who uh, you are. I don't yeah. think there's anyone... I, know, I bet your audience all knows you. I just yeah. feel like it's so, At least like, in the last two years. It's unbecoming of, like, YouTubers to be like, my life is hard because everybody wants to talk to me. <laughs> there's... I find, like... 80% of people, no, probably closer to 90, come up to you at shows or whatever it is, and they're just like, 
yo, I just want to, they're almost like embarrassed. They're like, hey, dude, I know, yeah, I got to take a photo. Like, right. I'm so sorry. Like, I'm taking up too much of your time. Everyone's so nice. But the odd person is just like, you're actually kind of lucky to be hanging out with me right now. Right. <laughs> but I feel like as like a stand up, you are like doing the, and around here, you're like relatively successful at the thing that everybody else around here is doing or watching or like very closely involved. I, I feel like it would be awkward to be you because around here, people probably come up to you like they know you because they watch all your shit. The, people do, but which I don't mind. The only time that I've ever been like, what are you doing, buddy? Is uh, the one thing is uh, I'll do the street interviews, right? I love them. Thank you. And then I that's fucking it. awesome. Thank you. And then, but someone won't, Someone will do an interview with me and then two seconds in I'm like, oh, you know who I am and mm. you're like kind of and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, what's the end game here that I, you know, they that you like got me is. by, you know, yeah. acting like I was just like crazy. Yeah. But most people don't do that. Most people just be like, oh, hey, what's up? Yeah. But I feel like you, I don't have like a career making ability. Mm. You have where if someone like makes the right connect, if there's someone's like a rapper and they make the right connection with you, like it legitimately could really help them. Yeah, because I talk to a lot of like people who are in a similar position to me, like academics, for instance, for instance, where he like n like none of his fans are really under the illusion that he's gonna listen to their song with twenty plays. Whereas with me, <laughs> you seem more for some reason, I don't know why, but they have this idea in their head that I would I might just be the person to DM. So yeah. I mean, like, like I'm not gonna lie, like was having a hard time going to sleep last night i started looking at my instagram dms and it i took it took me like 25 minutes to scroll through that day's worth of instagram oh, messages shit. and it's mostly like soundcloud links <laughs> and i just would never no, it'd be click even one better ever if so. it was someone I mean, what are the like, odds that you click one and it's good never I, I just wouldn't do it because i know i like the idea of someone sending you one being like yo you check out my link like this is hot and it's like they're porn <laughs> <laughs> like a, it's like a guy doing like a solo fap but i get like, that now where like <laughs> dudes will be like yo I, I got a huge dig i could really fuck <laughs> like will you sign me and it's just like it's the number one thing where like if you need me to guide you into the game you're not built for this very like, true you are gonna have to be able to meet one attractive woman in your life and convince her to sleep with you on camera and that's your like resume because you know it's it's hard for a dude like you have to be in really good shape like besides me i, <laughs> I kind of get to cheat it because i'm coming from a different perspective but like you gotta be in really good shape you have to have a way above average dick i mean but that's and then you have to have like masterful control over it yeah, and that's, that's just the like hard a part. very difficult. Have trifecta. you ever have you ever busted very quick doing the OnlyFans? Yeah, <laughs> did you just not release it? <laughs> no, I fucking uh, we did we did a little like hijinks, you know, a little the, editing. The, there's some fake cum, you know. You do the fucking <laughs> you do the, the the cum shot that's not actually cum. How much uh, Viagra's do you go with? I don't do it. Really? Yeah, nobody ever believes me, but I just like, I, I mean, why? I just seems like why wouldn't you? I've never tried. So I'm like scared to try it, and I I can go a bunch of times in a row without doing it. So I feel like I'm just gonna hold on to that. I think I was thinking about this when I was like when I knew you were coming. You you might be the most famous guy that transitioned into doing porn when your career was on the way up. I told my girl that I'm like you never. <laughs> oh, there's heart. nobody in the history of the world who has ever like reached success and then started doing porn and no, that's just, like I, it's a I, way down it's just like a side hustle but i'm not like not, the most but... successful person in the world but i have like built a business that is so Rising, devoid of, of like nobody could tell me anything no. so it's like like i feel like almost everybody would have a good reason not to do it of course yeah well screech would be probably the second most uh <laughs> rest in peace oh well, yeah but he was kind of I was, he was on the wrong side. Yeah, his career. <laughs> Didn't he have a, a Dirty saying. Sanchez at one point? Yeah, yeah that, that was the famous. He had the Dirty Sanchez. What's the Dirty Sanchez? Where you stick a, your finger in a girl's ass and you're like... Oh, he did that? Mustache. Yeah, it was like... A, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the context was, but he did do that. So I was with uh, in Vancouver yesterday and uh, the guys who I was with did the Ron Jeremy roast. Uh -huh. And like allegedly, they, they all say it's the curse of the Ron Jeremy roast where everyone that was on that roast was like Ron Jeremy screeched. Someone else, they all like immediately everything fell apart for them, like wow. immediately after this rose. Because Ron Jeremy is in like real deal prison. Oh, he's yeah, he's, he's, in. he's gone. They put him under the jail. He's got like the yeah, the, the R. Kelly. Do you issues. think he's become like the villain of the prison? Like he's 
<laughs> he's probably just a straight le- like from my experience yeah. if you fuck on camera dudes just think it's either fucking hilarious or they just think it's badass like yeah they just no, come up to you I mean. like i love watching you fuck man like some like because i never know what <laughs> angle somebody's coming to up to though. me with <laughs> Sometimes it's like I love no jumper, and sometimes it's like, bro, I love watching you and Lena fuck those bitches. <laughs> Yo, give her hell for me, bro. Yo, next time you do it, give her a stroke for me, bro. I will. <laughs> the uh, no, it's like I was picturing like you drop the soap and then you like look behind you and Ron Jeremy's there holding the dick, like yeah. the, the classic. <laughs> oh yeah, because he like he's like <laughs> seventy or something. He's yeah. old man. Yeah. But Screech, he apparently like stabbed a guy and stuff, and they were saying that they actually like Screech where they're just like, no, it's, if he stabbed a guy, like it's probably the guy, you know, they surrounded him and he was self-defense kind of thing. That's, well, I think that's what he said at the time. That's insane. Yeah. But, I, okay, there's two, one thing I was just thinking is like, cause you, I, last time I saw you, I said you had a good quote where you were like, if you're not kind of building a team, you're just a dude hustling. Mm, okay. Which I thought that was a good quote. But then you also said, that I always I would make a list of when I hear good quotes from people. But you said uh, the number one rule of the internet's just don't be angry. Mm. Game. Do you remember Ju- jewels? That- I do remember saying both. Yeah, okay. yeah, those are like things I've repeated many times before. So I fuck with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you have a good fucking piece of insight, it's good to put it out there. Yeah, yeah. But have you ever fucked up where you were mad on the internet and then messed it up? Oh yeah, dude. I remember one time. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the the audience of the world is like willing to accept anger from some people or like if it feels warranted. Like if you're a rapper, you can make a video screaming into the phone saying I fucking hate you and I'm going to beat your ass, whatever. Like, And a lot of people will accept it. I remember one time though, back in the day, like there was a a dude who came to my store and he was kind of talking shit and he was like a BMX dude. And like, I just flipped out and just swung on him and I didn't realize that one of my friends was filming and so obviously that I told them not to leak the fucking clip and it obviously gets leaked right away anyway it's your bodies that leaked it yeah my friends leaked it because they're fucking assholes and like <laughs> the clip is on world star and like it was the first time I punched somebody in like years and years so you so, kind of looked cool in it though I but mean you didn't. maybe it kind of looked cool but also it kind of like I think my punch was kind of like like it was like yeah. a little too like <laughs> nah like it had been a long time since I I don't know if I punched somebody since then but uh, anyway I remember like I was daily vlogging at the time and like I just decided like okay I'm just gonna use this I'm gonna fucking talk to this dude through my iPhone and just speak to him and I uploaded it and my fans just like unanimously were like just not feeling it like they just were not <laughs> like they just did not appreciate seeing me get worked up or like take yeah. that tone with somebody or hit somebody or whatever and it's it's that's like kind of a good thing with your fans is like your fans could like hold you to a higher standard than you would hold For yourself sure. to. even though i felt like in that situation i felt like i had every right to fucking punch this dude like because he was being such a dick i mean realistically in retrospect i was probably being a little <laughs> a little generous with myself like i probably definitely didn't have to do that i could have just been like tell i gotta leave you know but uh yeah and like since then i've just kind of but like i don't know the other day i tripped out on a rapper who was being like really rude on the podcast and i really barked on him and like the audience fucking loved it because they saw it as you know you being real it was justice because he actually was being a yeah, dick like you know a- and then he shut the he like chilled the fuck out and i feel like that kind of like justified it to them even further i'm like oh he changed his behavior so clearly even he kind of agreed with what adam said to him yeah i always i always like kind of uh would have even in stand-up i feel like i learned this rule but it kind of works for everything where you go like not be not mad about an issue before you talk about it mm. you know what i mean because you, you and then even if you're like on if you're if you're talking to a person or whatever and you're pretending like yeah i don't really care it's like but you do though and everyone can people can like sense it even if they don't right. know that but as like a comedian if somebody's being a dick or heckling you and if you go if you make fun of him you know we see people take w's heckling uh, or, or shitting on hecklers like that all the time by just laughing at them or making a joke at their expense or whatever but if you just get mad and it's like gross. fuck you you fucking ass like, just, oh, like you, you lost you, you lost yeah, like, he, he's tr- like even if he was mad like you're in this position of power on the stage like you you take the l right away right like for sure sometimes you see comics go just like a little too far they go a little too mean and like the audience wants to be on the comic side mm. And then they're just like forced to be on this heckler's side because you just were like, yeah. yeah. And then to go back to like, <laughs> and then you're just like, all right, guys. And then you're supposed to be funny, yeah. Like that's uh. tough. That's a weird line to walk, dude. Like that's why Chris Rock took like to me like a indisputable L when he just fucking made a joke back at Will Smith, and it would have been more of an L if he had 
been even more Wait, funny. Wait, L and, from the joke? No, no, a W. I'm okay, a, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was just such a W that he was able to immediately laugh at it because it's like, you know, like he's respecting the place where he's at, which is, I think, the most important thing. It's yeah. Like, this isn't a fucking bar. You can't just like run at him and punch him because Chris Rock could have done that. I know. A yeah. lot of people would do that. Maybe is that maybe guy? Us? I don't know. Is that guy who came to the studio with the gun? Your that is that your Will Smith? Is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that dude? I watched that video today. I was like, this is crazy. I don't know. I seen him in in court one time, and then I never heard about him again. Yeah, well, like so. This video basically, it this was I'd say a W for you. I'm using all the terms. We don't speak like this. It was weird, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because because. It was something like bad that happened to me in the sense that there was an intruder into our space and like, you know, I could have got hurt even though it ended up being a fake gun. So what happened, like just from the, I'm sitting in the back of my space, we're on live stream, we were doing this thing that we do where we listen to people's music for donations or whatever and we had just ordered food. The guy uh, who's, who's kind of like running the, doing security or whatever, he opens the door, brings the food in when he's got his back to the door. The fucking, uh, this, this dude runs in with a mask on and a fucking gun and like, points it at me and is like jumping up and down and he's just like give me all your motherfucking money or some shit like that and like as soon as i see this i then immediately see the security with his gun pointed at the fucking guy's head so i'm like not knowing what to think and i think i thought the same thing that the security thought which was this seems like a fucking prank like it seems so weird oh. that both of us like doubted it because i feel like if he thought it was 100 percent real he would have shot the guy in the head right but he 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 hesitated for a second and then like him and like another dude or two just ended up throwing the guy on the ground and just beat, we kicked his head in, beat the dog shit out of him until he was just out, and we had to call the cops and they took him out of there. And but when the guy, the moment that when I was watching it was like interesting because the guy comes in and sort of has a gun and you were like laughing and I'm yeah. sure you talked about this a bunch, but it's like it's nervous. <laughs> I guess it was kind of yeah. But I was what I was wondering. I was like. Are you, were you conscious that the cameras are rolling? Like, and yes. then my point is, are you, and I was saying that, it's like the, the, the thing of like, are you more human or podcaster? <laughs> yeah, because part of thought. it in my head is I thought it was one of my friends playing a joke on me or as a prank or something. So like, I only had a couple of seconds, but it's kind of going through my head. Like, is this a joke? Like, are you going to look like an idiot if you fall for this joke? How could anyone think this joke is funny? Like, yeah. it was like kind of all, all went that stuff. super fast, and I just had no fucking idea what to do. So I'm kind of like, hee hee. Like, I don't, I don't I mean, know that's where the Chris that came Rock from. thing, too. It's like, what's he going to fucking do? take a swing at Will Smith during the Oscars? Like, yeah. he probably was just like. But then it's weird, too, because it's like immediately I just had like a wave of people accusing me of faking it. I, I well, mean, that's Chris Rock. Every our group, everybody was like, <laughs> I mean, they're like, yeah, it's fake, it's and I was like, it's so real. Sure you're Chris Rock. Rock. People still ask me all the fucking time, like, was that real? Like, you didn't fake that. I'll meet people that I know well who like thought it was a skit. Yeah, and I'm like, I was on like a oh fuck, what was it Current Affair Insider Edition or some <laughs> shit? So I, yeah. Because that that's I think that fed into why people thought it was fake is because nothing bad happened to me as a result of it and it was a fake gun so it's not like there was even a chance of anything happening right and then immediately after it's like oh i'm on logan paul's podcast i'm all over the news i'm fucking having like all these articles written about me and it's like you know for me i just kind of figured like i've done i've gone viral for other stupid shit in the past it's like you just lean into it you go on fucking people's shows you talk about yeah, it you, you have get, a moment get what you can out of it because you know this only happens once in a while that there's something that's that viral and you're not wrong in the scenario yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> like what are the odds where you have like a big news story and you're yeah. like i'm like kind of the good guy here so then that's why people put it together in their head that they think it's fake because it's like Look at all these good things that came yeah. from it. It must have been fake. He went on Logan Paul's podcast right after. It must have been fake because he got, he got something positive out of it. it. Even like it felt like it took a few days before it was like, "Yo, that was fucked up." Like yeah. I need I to mean, be really yeah, God careful. Could have been killed. Yeah. Right. Like. Yeah. Um, this is like you're mo so much more in that world than me. But it's like, do you ever do you ever feel a little bit where you're just like. Uh, cause you know, you obviously get, especially the stuff you're doing, you're friends with actual people that are, you know, going to jail and like whatever, right. this is going to be such a fucking corny question, but like, do you know what I mean? Like, are you ever like, fuck, we're getting a little close to this thing. Sometimes like a fucking, uh, there's this dude, Twisty P who's like a rapper, I guess you could say he's more of like a meme at this time. He's. I don't know him. Out of his mind. Yeah, you nobody should know him. But he's like, a, <laughs> he, he's viral though. And he's, he's really funny. He's a cool dude or whatever, but he like. 
uh, was supposed to go on like the other day while I was in New York. He was supposed to go on my homie's podcast, Disconnected, that they do on Thursdays. It's my boy House Phone and a couple of co-hosts. And uh, this dude was supposed to come on, and he announced it multiple times on his social media that he was going to be on this. And some fucking dude, like he has real beef with like a bunch of rappers and shit. And like apparently some dude waited in the parking lot and fucking whacked him in the head with a gun and beat the dog shit out of him. And so then he comes into the fucking space. And that's the first time that's ever happened that somebody has like done something to a guest. And to be honest, he might be like our most unstable guest of all time. It was like kind of like <laughs> it was like a situation that would not happen to almost anybody. And like yeah. anybody else who is this hot would be moving a certain way to protect themselves. But he's just like nuts and like disrespecting people on the internet, or whatever. But he came onto their fucking podcast with blood all over his face and but they they That's wild. It, it's debatable like what they should have done, but they fucking shoot him out. Cause like He's just sweaty, fucking bloody and shit. And they were just like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, this is disgusting. Like, Blasi is one of the hosts, and he got fucking blood on his jeans from this dude. And then everybody was super mad at them because they're like, yo, like, that, that was amazing content. Like, we needed to hear from him. And he his, his excuse that I couldn't really argue with, though, was like, dude, like, I fuck with him as a human being. Like, I care about him. I don't want him on camera like that. Yeah. And I was like, I don't necessarily feel that way. Like, I would have gone with the content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... I, I respect that, I guess, yeah. There is, uh, there's that thing even, like, just even sometimes getting, like, too close to it, too, when, because, you know, I guess at your core, it's like you're an interviewer or whatever, but it's like, whenever you get, you know, like, Louis C.K. said this, I think the South Park guys said this, but it's like, they were at the kind of, you know, Hollywood parties once you start getting popular, and then mm -hmm. you're just like, fuck, I need to, like, step away from this, because... I can't be objective when I'm like so in it. You know what I mean? Do you ever feel, cause you must be friends with someone and then they release something. You gotta be like, Oh, I gotta say this sucks or whatever. Yeah. And they get mad. Like the other day, a uh, little pump FaceTime me at eight in the morning just to let me know, <laughs> like you've been talking shit on your podcast about me. Right. 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 He's like super mad. I'm like, I think the worst thing, because I, I I was very much a part of Pump's come up and everything, I think the worst thing that I said about him was just basically that he had kind of fallen off, which is kind of not really a, a debatable thing. You know, it's like when you look at the numbers from a few years ago versus now, it's just, you know. Which happens to most people. You yeah, have your of course. Moment. Yeah. It's actually more normal than it isn't. Probably. Every comedian, celebrity, actor, rapper, whatever. I mean, rap, it's usually pretty dramatic just because it's like you're kind of on top of the world and then like people don't want to hear from you. Yeah. But like, yeah, he got super fucking pissed off about that, which was weird to me because to me, it's like, I can't just like lie about you for the rest of your career, you know, just because we're friends. Like, I have to be able to be objective. And yeah, I'm, and I'm not going to shit on you. I'm not going to be mean, but I have to be able to talk about the state of affairs and not be a total fucking liar to my audience. You know, they're not going to respect me if I'm like on camera, like, yeah, I think his career is just great. It's just as good as it used to be, you know? It's like, yeah, yeah. No, dude, it's, it is such a hard one to f like tread that like line i'm because i'm such a i don't know if people pleasers right where but sometimes i'm a pussy about it too i remember do you remember we, I, we were talking about on the podcast this guy he did this article about like why the wnba is great or like something real corny right and then we were tr trashing it and i like posted the clip and the guy qu worked at like new york times or something and he quote tweeted it being like wow i worked really hard on that article thanks dot 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 <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, what just like bumming dweeb. me out. What a dweeb. But that's I, yeah, so, that's but such I was a honestly thing like, to say. If he said like, fuck you, like blah, blah, I would But the fact that he, like, I just heard his feelings. That was, that like, was the oh. same as what the, the guy at <laughs> your school was like, thanks for that, Ryan. Yeah. But what, like, like, I mean, how could he possibly do that and not like address what was said? Like, no, of course. I'm still not stopping, but it's like, uh, at least I don't know that guy where I'm just like, now imagine I'm like friends with that guy. It's like, yeah. you have to, you almost have to remove but the, the from standard like snarky new york times editor thing or you know our author thing to do would be more to like just shit on you and yeah, just like i mean be a total huge bloggers, dick and not but. even consider your perspective you know but yeah i mean that's weird to me because it's like no like to, if you're gonna make art you're opening yourself up to criticism like yeah, yeah come on if you're gonna be a public figure you're opening yourself up to analysis yeah yeah and people always uh kind of like mix up the two it's like if some like the difference between like trying to cancel someone is get their platforms taken away is very different oh, yeah. from someone being like i hate this guy he sucks right because i'll get people you know doing that and then sometimes even like oh this guy trying to cancel you i'm like no i think he just doesn't like my stuff that's mm. fine yeah that's fine <laughs> That is definitely the line is when they try to start going for your sponsors or whatever. It's just like, that's yeah, now you're a, it, like a fucking loser. Yeah. 100%. Dude, the, I think we even like, 
off camera, maybe we talked about this a little bit, but it's like, there's, it really is the biggest disconnect in the world with like bloggers and then reality. Cause you were saying also in the hip hop world, it's like the, every article will be like, this guy's popping off. And then you're just like, what? No one even <laughs> cares about that person. Right. No, but that's what, okay. It's two different things because it's really hard to fool like hip hop fans because they they kind of tapped in. They get what's popular and what's not popular, and like the real rap fans pay such close attention to everything. But then you'll have like editors at like white publications that want to convince you like, and th there's just so much of this like fucking <laughs> yeah. Meg the Stallion winning Best New Artist over like Lil Baby, right? He literally streamed like a hundred times as much as her. He's like not even close. It's, it, yeah, and she is a beloved figure for. Like she's a media darling because of the fact that she ate, well even before she got shot in the foot just because she's a strong black woman of course they love her hip hop in general I think loved her at first maybe they've had a little bit of a change of heart but then like you know little baby's like the fucking biggest rapper of the last couple of years he's like the rapper that people talk about as potentially being the biggest rapper besides I'm not Drake in. I have a couple on my workout iPod <laughs> right yeah I mean like he's just insanely massive and like the actual hip hop world. It just does not buy into that shit at all. And you see this like narrative building by like mainstream media to try to like pr promote the rappers that check the right boxes. And in reality, like the average hip hop fan is much more conservative, is not fucking concerned about, you know, <laughs> diversity in their yeah. rappers or whatever. They're not, they're, <laughs> they're not looking for like an Indian, a, a 80 year old Indian lady with one leg to listen to or whatever. Yeah, you I know? don't think there's that I much mean, of a shortage of diversity yeah. as is, too. It's like, you know, all the only <laughs> diversity they're saying is like we need more girls. And yeah. it's like, which is why I think that the same as hip hop and there's certain other things where it's like most mass, like masculine things that aren't nerds it's hard for them to like take it over because yeah. a bunch of people come in they're like here's what you think and if the if it's like a masculine culture people are like shut the fuck up right. well I, i'm into poker too and poker is like five percent women maybe and has always been like five percent women and there's all these initiatives yeah, to bring women into they don't it. have brains for math no, well, yeah, so your word's not mine but probabilities I mean, <laughs> it's just like they, they do so much to try to bring women into it but at the end of the day it's like this is just like if you were to look at every they other like similar yeah. strategy game, I think a lot of women are kind of turned off by the gambling element that a lot of guys seem like they can stomach. It's like, you know, it reminds me. I'm from New Hampshire. And at one point after I left New Hampshire, there was a whole big initiative to try to get black people to move to New Hampshire. And I'm just like, this is not going to work. Yeah, why? Like, why would why would any <laughs> self serving black person want to move somewhere where they're so not going to have any family or friends or realistically the culture is probably not tailored to what they're into or whatever? Not to say that you couldn't be a black guy and be into. Well, I mean, I'm from New Hampshire. There's no culture. It's not like yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. a bizarre idea for no fucking reason. But also, yeah, also for who? It's like the people that move there probably won't like it. And it's like for you to get to be like, look, I fucking got more people there. Yeah, it's just like someone who works there who's just like, yo, these uh, these statistics are kind of. Yeah, like, there's a lot of white <laughs> people that live here. So. Uh, we should uh, get the. Yeah, this, we got to stop this. Are you doing any wilds? Because you have like poker. And you, you know Matt Sankom kind of from poker, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. From the hard times? You know, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. you yeah. kind of like hardcore shit too, right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, we know Matt Super. I've been in some mosh pits. He's no, but I've been, I've been basically out of hardcore since I was like 21. But I still will like go to a show from one of my friends, uh, my boy Brendan from Incendiary. I just got dinner with him the other day. Nice. Yeah. That he's the one who got me into like Fugazi and those kind of bands because I was in a more like rancid and punk before then. Oh really? And he kind of those guys kind of like back in the day, um, or recently, like. Eight years ago. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I grew up listening to Fugazi and all that. Hey, I no, like yeah, a I wasn't into pop that punk to punk to metal to death metal to black metal to grindcore. Like I just like yeah, yeah, sampled yeah. all the genres before I was kind of like, well, I feel like culturally I identify with hardcore the most because I'm not into like Nordic fucking myths or whatever the fuck they talk that about. That stuff gets a little wild. I don't, I, yeah, like the, <laughs> I was always more into like hardcore even though like a lot of hardcore lyrics are like unbelievably dumb too. They're just all about like betrayal and like all this stupid <laughs> shit and like, but I couldn't like, I just can't listen to like Slayer and just be hearing about the catacombs of hell rotting around the other. Like, but I, I remember listening to Cannibal Corpse for a while there too, and that's yeah, I and mean, that's the most craven shit. We did know? a hardcore video. Was hardcore saved my life? Did you ever seen that one? <laughs> we did it with this guy Kyle Kinane. He's a comedian. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And it was uh, the thing was it was it was guys being like you know before hardcore I was you know getting drunk and fighting people in the parking lot every day. 
now I'm just fighting people in the parking lot every day <laughs> to fight racism. <laughs> like it's yeah. all, fight. yeah, yeah, it's all the exact same shit. But. No, but my boy Brendan has to like hide it. He, well, he's not hide it, but he like really doesn't talk about it at all with anybody he works with because there, uh. even though his lyrics are like political and they're clearly not like some fucking psychopath shit, it's just like imagine like you're just average goody two shoes person in an office having yeah. to like know that you go to these fucking dark rooms <laughs> and scream and just like you know just so it would be very hard for a lot of people to understand well that's why i mean okay so one thing that i argue with people and i know that you disagree with is i've always said i thought six nine was cool <laughs> and i know <laughs> well, i love when well, six nine well, he was super man. cool yeah for I'm a while not, there yeah yeah well he's tapped in like he you know yeah, helped yeah. make the guy or whatever and i'm like i my hip hop thing is when I'm drunk late night I like to watch hip hop beefs that I do get into that but a lot of great YouTube content out there yeah it's very uh, it's you know it's it's hard you get down rabbit holes very easily right yeah. I'll go I'll, I'll be watching like Canadian hip hop beefs before I know it right <laughs> but the when I saw him I just thought it was like I didn't even like love it so much as I kind of was like this I can see why this guy's gonna be fucking huge it was just kind of like this new energy of where what what did you why do you think he sucks <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, i don't know yeah well you don't like okay. him, right? his music was pretty Sick. incredible for a while though. oh like, okay yeah, that's yeah, yeah, all yeah. I no saying. no definitely because like i i saw him he was like basically like a kid who was watching the soundcloud rap wave unfold and he said okay i can take the aesthetic compounds from this the components of like you know the hair and the face tattoos and all this shit and then he kind of took from like the drill side of things and used these like you know musically and like took these like aggressive ass vocal style and he really came up with something that if you if you're going to be real about it it was the sound of fucking america for like a year maybe kind a little of, bit yeah. longer and then he gets you know this crazy fed case and he ends up snitching on like 25 fucking so gang you're members. all it's that stuff for you yeah and i just saw him because okay this is the thing when he ended up getting that fed case and he he gets locked up he ends up taking a fucking plea deal and he rats on everybody it's like when and then he gets out like way early because of covid and everything i thought that he was going to go a different direction with his career. Like I thought what? not like leaning into being You don't a have snitch. to be the same guy that I, you don't have to go down that route that I went down like that kind I mean, of thing inspiration. I think he's talented enough that I could have seen him going a lot of different routes. I could have seen him be more like a YouTuber or like a gamer or something. If he wanted to keep doing music, I could have seen him go in a fucking rock direction, dude, like get a band and like make these crazy anthems like fucking Machine Gun Kelly or something. I could see him doing that. Uh, you know, even if you just would be like smart and like actually allow himself to like because i think he is smart but like play into that i could have imagined that but he didn't do any of that he fucking got a bunch of like random gang members from brooklyn to hang out around him and he just went around acting tough and like trying to convince people that he was the this huge gang member even though he had just fucking snitched on all these dudes and he I, didn't drop the act a little bit yeah he tried to like keep playing the same game and he wants to talk shit about every all these rappers dead homies and everything and it's just like what once was kind of like, whoa, this guy is such a badass. Like, he's so out of his mind. He's crazy. Very quickly became like, oh, this guy is like a fucking clown. Like, he's like a total joke. And his music just stopped hitting. Like, it, everything he's put out since he got out of prison. Like, I don't know if it's because, like, the world kind of fell out of the spell that they were previously under with him. Or if it's just actually that the music sucks dick now. Well, that but, is a pretty good explanation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, and, and... I mean, snitching's not exactly cool in that world. I mean, I just don't <laughs> like... And, and he hates me because... I just like I interviewed his his uh, baby mama who talked a bunch of shit about him. I interviewed the bloods that he was in, like that the ones that didn't go to prison. I interviewed them after uh, he he went away and everything. And uh, you know, like I just had real conversations with people who hate him. And he like really holds that against me that I like, well yeah what are you supposed to do yeah I mean I, I you're I not in one of the sides. those interviews are fucking gigantic like some of those interviews because people were so interested in hearing like a more accurate description of what was going on with him you know you know what that maybe reminds me of if it's kind of what you said which now I think I see it is like it's like the comedian everything's back to comedy with me mm -hmm. but it's like the comedian that's like you know he's like hanging out with everyone and then he goes online and tries to cancel someone then he comes back he's like what's up and we're like. <laughs> All right, you're like kind of don't get to do this anymore. <laughs> like, you know uh, what I mean? That must happen, huh? Yeah, like that would be to me the, yeah, that's the snitching of our community. <laughs> wow, that's funny. <laughs> that's the snitching. You snitched to like YouTube. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or Viacom or stuff. something. 
You see oh, yeah. a lot of rap or a yeah. lot of comedians get their rep really kind of blemished by abusing the fair use shit, huh? Yeah, and I think that's them not knowing the codes of the different world. Mm. It's like they don't know that the same way that they would say comedians would be like stealing jokes is like the worst thing you could do. Or in hip hop, it's the same thing where they, you know, you find out someone is a ghostwriter and it's like, oh my, you know. But is stealing jokes as bad as it used to be? Because I feel like yes. with so many comedians, it's just got to be like a constant accusation going around or no it, because you're you have to reach a certain tolerance level no you're the thing is you're in the like yeah. that's to someone who's not in it but if you're in a city and you're in a club four or five nights a week right like you know it's, and it's not, so obvious you know it's like yeah, such a like it's not like oh we have the same thing or you took this uh, none of that's not mm -hmm. what anyone's talking about it's like you see a, it's like it's you see these people every night, so it's yeah. like, and you know how good they are. You know, you can't really hide. You it know really I mean? doesn't happen, to be honest, on like a local level, though. Really? It's more the most you see it is, it's like someone on TV stealing, and you the like they stole a joke from someone else, like or SNL it on, doing it, or, or SNL stealing. But like, yeah, you don't see like some one person coming after another, and they're like, yeah, you're doing. Do you guys job. ever like write jokes for Amy Schumer or anything? No, I've written <laughs> for like other comedians. I've had for like fake comedians not, or anything? Not for stand up, right. but I have written uh, a lot of things. That's why like, it is funny with when like 2016, like feminism stuff was like really popping off, like the men are bad. Like yeah. a lot of us were kind of like, you know, I did this, you know, show at CBC where I was writing for other people's stuff. And it was like, like Kurt Metzger, he got, he was getting in a lot of trouble. He's like a good friend of mine, super funny. And he was like, everyone yelling at him. He's like, I have two Emmys for my feminist writing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's amazing. He, he wrote on Amy Schumer show. That's oh why. my God, that's so sick. <laughs> but what I was going to ask is, with the wrist tolerance stuff, because you're like a poker guy and all that shit, are you doing wild stuff with your money right now? Like, are you in... No, you're not Nothing. in crypto. Fucking academics was giving me a hard time about this the other day. Like, he's like, no cars, no watches. He's like, what What do you do with your money? I'm like, I fucking, I don't really think of it like that. Like, to be honest, I just built a, I, I, just, I was thinking more gambly stuff, oh, though. Nah, like, I love playing poker, but I'm pretty good at poker. So it doesn't really feel like, you know, and I'm obviously not as good as like real pros and shit. It's not, you know, the risk. Yeah, it's not that crazy. I mean, if I enter a $10,000 tournament, I don't feel like I'm spending $10,000. I'm thinking, if anything, it's I'm, like an investment. I might be like break even or a little bit, Over time. you know, positive or whatever. And I really don't give a shit. It's not like I'm like, you know, because. I know a lot of people like grind away at these like low stakes to try to build up their poker bank roll. And obviously I don't have to do that. So I just enter like whatever stakes tournaments. And yeah, but it's not like that's really the only thing that I let myself do that I wouldn't do if I was, uh, you know, poor or whatever is just like enter high stakes tournaments. And like, I've, I've, you know, my girl and I are here, we're staying in a nice ass hotel by central park and we got fucking first class on the way yeah, here. That's, that's the kind of shit I'll do. But you're not, you don't have weird NFT s schemes where you're nah. like, <laughs> well, I did buy it. A NFT. A yeah, did you punk. buy an ape? We you have a crypto punk, punk? Yeah. Nice. For like uh, 160K. And Gary, I think they're like 120 Did Gary V now. make you buy it? Gary V told me the other day <laughs> that they're around 120K because I haven't had the heart to look. <laughs> I bet yeah, you yeah, lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because it was up to like half a million. For oh, they a got bit No, they got really? like six months ago, man. They were fucking flying. Dude, they were, you can never tell if they were real sales or not, but there were, some of them yeah. were going through for a million. Like, there was a moment where me and my girl definitely could have cashed out and made like 150K each, but I was just like, no, we're holding it forever. Yeah. yeah, well, maybe, but probably you're you're probably still better off selling it now, right? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, it depends what your plan is. If you want to keep it for, if you think they're gonna be worth ten million dollars in ten years, no. I had a hundred twenty k in crypto, and then like all this shit happened, and I didn't look at it for like a month, and then I looked at it, and it was down to like sixty k. Like yesterday, I think I looked at it, it was 60K. And I looked at it today, and it was 50K. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. just like, is this really going to go to zero? Like, that's <laughs> but, but, but you want to know what? Is that like, uh, I've almost like the majority of the money that I had in crypto was money that I got for posting like stupid NFTs on the No Jumper Instagram uh. back before everybody like n regarded all the NFT shit as like a huge scam. Yeah. So it's kind of like, it didn't feel like real money in the Someone first place. Someone gave me like half a Bitcoin maybe like four years ago. Really? And they I opened up a wallet so they could send it to me. And I have no idea where it is. And oh. I went through all my Twitter messages the other day and I couldn't find, it. find it. I remembered. I was like, oh, I have like, what's, I, I know, don't know, what's that? that? Like you, 15, 20 grand? I don't know, whatever yeah, it is. That's a lot, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's like worth, like, worth cruising through my fucking Twitter Fuck message. Yeah. And then I was like, I can't find it. And I'm like, 
I feel I'm not. I don't. Don't. Well, I guess now I'm doing that. Right now, I was like, I'm not going to post about it. But if you're the guy that sent me it, <laughs> <laughs> send me another message, dude. How balling are you that somebody <laughs> sent you that much? Well, I guess well, was, four years ago wasn't it, that much. I don't even know if it was Bitcoin. It might have been something else. Like, but it was like the amount that would have been worth that now. I mean, if it wasn't Bitcoin, <laughs> it's probably like maybe worth, no. It might have been Ethereum. Oh, okay. But yeah, it was, might be worth but it was question. like at the time. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. There was someone that had a ton of ton of it at the time. Yeah, yeah. Can't remember exactly, but maybe somebody will steal my punk. Yeah, that's possible. That'd be a good story, at least. That was you, that was what happened with uh, Seth Green or whatever, where he had a yeah. he had a bored ape, you know oh that, and God. then he he's like he had this bored ape that he had written a show around, yeah, and the bored ape was the f- star. And then it got stolen from him by some guy or whatever. And then he was like, I think you had to pay the guy 300 grand to get it back. Yeah, you probably or something. did him a fucking favor. That's show idea. It sounds retarded. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Wants I've to had watch a guy pitch me. Well, no, he, he went show. and bought it back from the guy <laughs> yeah. so he could do the show. And then everybody's like, this show is like the worst. <laughs> There's no way. Every crypto oriented show is going to be garbage. <laughs> I'm mad just thinking about it. Like, just picturing, like, I don't know. Just seeing those fucking stupid looking apes you, on the screen. You know what it is though? It's one of those things where like because with the lag time of like coming up with an idea to when it's done, yeah. you're like when they came up with the idea, they're like, This is gonna be the shit. Mm. And then now they're like, We're really putting out a show about fucking bored apes. Yeah. When like every they're all down eighty percent. Unless it's for like, fucking two year olds. Like what are we it's doing? Not here? though, it's for hype beasts and shit. Mm. Do you think that uh Okay, the theory that if you're like a white rapper, and I know there's a few like different ones now, but like you either had to be funny or you have to be the like lyrical, like you have to be mis- like the philosophy's hypocrisy. You have to be the uh, the fat. <laughs> you either have to be the fast rapper guy or you have to be like kind of funny. Some truth to that. There's a, there's quite a few like. I guess white Jack rapper. Harlow's not that. Yeah, but you know what it is? Is like there's there's quite a few white rapper archetypes, but then there's like one dude per. Like forever. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, you have Paul Wall. He's that guy. And who like who has been the Paul Wall since him? Like what's the Paul Wall? Like Paul Wall grills? like chubby, like white dude, hella jewelry, like cool as fuck. All kind the, of not even sure if he's white. But all the black dudes love him. He's just so clearly like a part of this culture. Okay. I don't I don't know. I haven't seen one since. Like Eminem. Has there been like another Eminem? Like a white I, I guy? mean, every oh. other white rapper says I'm the next Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like, they? Isn't that pretty common? There hasn't been that many white rappers who have really gotten that far in the game, if you think about it. And the one the one archetype that white rappers just don't get to do is like gangster, which is like a huge percentage of rappers. But white guys getting taken and seriously kind of isn't any as of a gangster or a tough guy or whatever. I mean, I see. I know dudes who are like on an underground level that do it and are respected, but on like a bigger level, it just doesn't really yeah. happen that much, you know. All I can think of is Malibu's Most Wanted. And yeah, was, obviously, and was Jamie joke. Kennedy was. Probably like Stitches had there. a shot there, but actually, someone told me he's Cuban. So never Wait, mind. but he was funny though, a little bit. It was funny. Exactly. I put him yeah, in my was funny like, category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, try to imagine Stitches. like a white, that guy ruled. <laughs> like a white NBA young boy. Yeah. I don't know. Like, like who's got like that sad I don't really thug know that pat? Or, <laughs> I said sad yeah. thug about like a white Tupac who okay. like the world will allow yeah, him yeah, to yeah. be like tortured by his of his emotions it, and shit is like no. they're just not gonna let a white dude do that no so, one wants to hear that and I also don't want to hear that you go shut up Jack Harlow is smooth as fucking butter you know everybody likes him he's kind of it's funny but he's though, not trying that hard yeah I mean he's definitely been pushed by the machine but i think people just genuinely love him he's like one of the few white dudes that people can see him like hitting on a sweetie on the fucking red carpet and the reaction is not like leave her alone totally. it's, it's kind of like started to pull it off y'all could actually be a thing like we could kind of respect well obviously like there's a lot of people who would not want to see him with her but <laughs> you know this definitely felt like people were kind of open to that in a way that i can't think of like you know yellow wolf like yeah he was but no i'm not they're not gonna let yellow wolf date sweetie okay i don't know well, he's with some singer now, isn't he's he? He's doing something. I don't know. Yeah. He's with the Canadian singer. Is he? Uh-huh. Oh, Fifi Dobson? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, because weren't that? they at the, in, at the Yeah, show? we saw them in Nashville. Yeah. Oh, I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sort of tapped into the hip-hop world a little okay. tighter, but... <laughs> <laughs> My yellow wolf acumen is not not high. Do you find... Uh, I always think it's like... One of the things that was like making me laugh about... I know if this is like two idiots talking to you about hip-hop and you... Go, oh, it's <laughs> your boys are like, who are these I'm here. <laughs> but the, no, I was thinking that like... there It was kind of... Uh, there was like such a switch where... Um, 
kind of like when everyone went from like baggy jeans to tight jeans mm. and then it was that was the first time hip hop had the like the what like old rock and roll guys were when they go we used to be real hip hop mm. where it's like now I think there's two there's been two generations of people being like we used to actually do it for real right. like but you know what fucking weirds me out is that like if you look if you go to the fucking skate park around here you're gonna see all these young ass kids wearing baggy ass jeans skating. baggy's back again yeah because it the, always just flip flops but then with rappers it's still totally on the tight jean shit like I feel like the memory of dudes rocking baggy ass jeans is still too fresh in the minds of a lot of rappers that like oh. to them that's still some bummy it ass doesn't, shit it doesn't look like they're it looks like they're going to dress like their dad not yeah. we're doing a new thing but again when I go to fucking Saks Fifth or wherever I'm buying jeans or whatever it just feels like there should be way more baggy jeans here but it seems like they don't think that people really want that yet which is weird to me no I think they kind of don't you're right it looks mm. a little bummy yeah <laughs> What was gonna take another quick break here to tell the fellas about Athletic Greens now. You know that me and DP have been on the greens, philosophies, athletic greens, bad MCs. Bad at rhyming. Bad at rhyming. You want to get on Athletic Greens. I take it every single morning before I take a run or work out. I usually work out in, later in the afternoon, but when I, every, every single morning before I do it. I will say, which is my number one testimony of Athletic Greens, is it's th probably the most of anything that I've ever done like this where I actually continue to do it. Yeah. yeah it's just too. one scoop. I even got my girl on it. Yeah. For me, a lot of times I forget, but this one, there's a benefit because it tastes good. So I actually do uh, continue to do it every morning where a lot of times I fall off with things like this. So if you don't have time, you're having trouble sleeping, wanted better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system, hated taking pills and vitamins, wanted a supplement that actually tastes great, and you want to see what the hype's about. It has a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to every single morning. So what's the stuff? One delicious scoop of athletic greens. You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens to start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging. So does that not sound good? You want to get in on this today. It's a small micro habit that has big benefits. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and it ended up he ended up on a complicated supplement routine that would cost him, you know, upwards of 100 bucks a day. And that's why he created Athletic Greens that was all of that in one drink in the morning. It's one thing that you can do every single day to take great care of yourself. So, Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the cold and flu season. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash boyscast. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash boyscast to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. What Remember, uh, okay, when you did the, the, like, out of the interviews you did, like, obviously there's tons of, like, wild shit. Well, actually, what's the wildest thing before I say what I was going to say? <sighs> Where you're just like, that was fucking nuts. Fuck. I don't want to give you the same example that I just gave Andrew Schultz. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to talk about the Aaron Carter one. Oh, well, yeah. The whole trajectory with him was fucking insane. Yeah. Cause, so, because he basically showed up and then, like, he was kind of being aggressive. Like, obviously, but he's like, he was kind of like sitting here like this being like, yo, you don't want me to get up kind of thing. Like, and I mean, in my mind, I'm looking at it and being like, like he's tiny, right? Yeah, yeah. Does he does he believe? Like, does he know he's being kind of funny? Or does in Aaron Carter's mind, he's like, I'm actually they don't. No one really understands how much of a gangster I am. Like when he's doing all like that stuff. Ho like, does Hollywood real? just destroy it? Like, I spent so much time him. around him that I don't really know. Like, I, it honestly is really hard to tell. He doesn't really seem like he's joking though. Like, even like okay, I'll give you an example. Like he he fought Lamar Odom. And they fought. Yeah, yeah, and got the shit beat on him like immediately. He, he got beat up. Yeah, he didn't By get Lamar, paid. That, yeah, for sure. Like I know the promoter. He didn't get paid that much. And then we we were gonna have him fight Boom Gang. Oh, you mean in a actual a boxing, boxing match? match. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then we were gonna have him fight Boom Gang, and it was just like Boom Gang is like, you know, he's like 
nine inches taller than him or some shit. He's like towers over him. He's way more muscular. He clearly would beat the dog shit out of him. And Aaron Carter was so down, like dying to sign the fucking contract. And it was like very weird for me to like kind of be having this conversation with him where he's 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 just kind of like, I don't care. Like I'm down. I'm going to do it. Like he's just fucking nuts, dude. Like it's it's hard to put a finger on it. And especially like, I don't know, he's just always coming in with a different girl. And like it's just they, they seem like they're just kind of on board for all this craziness. I haven't had him on in a while. I don't hate the guy or anything. I, I think he's fucking entertaining as shit. But it is I, entertaining. I don't have much of a read on exactly what's going he on. He did have a, well, that one song that was like, I feel like when I'm talking to like people that are a little younger than me, I'm like, you don't, I don't think you understand how big the Backstreet Boys were. You know what I mean? No, he's not in Backstreet Boys. No, but. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, bro- yeah, yeah. the nope. same reason why when I'm watching Blue Bloods, if I watch Blue Bloods, <laughs> and Danny. His uh, favorite show. And yeah. Danny Wal- Donnie Wahlberg comes on, I'm like, I don't think people realize, like, this was like the most famous heartthrob in the right. world. It's so bizarre. He's playing this, like, old cop. And my girl grew up, like, literally, like, menstruating for the first time while she was fucking masturbating over Aaron Carter. She loved Aaron she Carter. Said, you 100% <laughs> ruined Aaron Carter for me. But that was, like, her childhood heartthrob. That's a, that's a huge move on your Which, part. This though. clearly means that she was born within like a very specific time because I don't think that that lasted that <laughs> long. But there was like a lot of girls who that was their teen heartthrob, you know? And like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, what was weird was I met him and then the next day he comes in with this huge like Medusa head tattooed on the side of his head like it was kind of like a lot of people said in the comments like did he just meet you and then just like immediately <laughs> get a tattoo like almost in the exact same place that you <laughs> anyone have. he's around he just becomes them yeah and then like he came on the podcast with my co-host and he's like giving them jewelry and shit and like yeah it was just bizarre dude and i mean it's I, like manic almost i guess he's not on drugs anymore but i mean you could fool me i mean he's he says he's passed drug tests and all this shit but i mean i don't know yeah, it was wild mm. accusation from that guy. I don't know. But the, no, there was like, when he was coming out with all the stuff of his brother, it all was just like, is what, like, it is hard to like parse out. It was like, what kind of guy was Nick Carter that right. dude? When he's describing Nick Carter to you, you're kind of like, it almost feels irresponsible for me to even like respond to this or like try to dig deeper because it just doesn't really feel that tied to reality or like, yeah, I, I just I don't know how to deal with him in that situation because it's just like this is such a serious accusation. It feels weird that I'm platforming it when there I don't think there's evidence of it. Or what was anything. the sorry? What was the accusation? I think that Nick like yeah. Carter's like raping it, everyone, yeah. sexual abuse, violence. Him all this like shit. he raped his brother. Aaron Carter has accused him of this. I don't. I don't or know if it was towards him. Oh, okay. Or I don't remember. Honestly, I've kind of zoned a lot of that. Have you had people come on where they'll like make wild accusations and you're like, I'm not going to air that. I mean, the best of the world recently was fucking with the chick and she was saying with like Facebook or whatever. I was seeing that like all yeah. over the news, like just regular news. So I have this girl Kitty on who's like an OnlyFans girl. Yeah, and I think I know those girls, the ones from Toronto. Yeah, they have their own podcast too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they basically, the girl Kitty said that she got her Instagram deleted, so she went on LinkedIn and started just following a lot of different Facebook employees and then systematically sleeping with them, and that got her Instagram back. And so then she talked about it on my Patreon, and then all of a sudden she lost her Instagram again, which I probably could have told her was going to happen, and it felt kind of shitty that that yeah, happened. Yeah. That's kind of like rubbing it in their faces a lot. Like you figured out this crazy hack of essentially and then you're like exactly. going on this yeah, that was giant podcast. Yeah, why did she she should have not done that. But then again like for the girls who get their Instagrams deleted and then get them back, it feels like a lot of times they're just going away anyway. Like they just fucking lose them again afterwards. Well, we were talking about that. That's like, you know, we're obviously always, you know, getting strikes and dealing with like every second video I get taken down on certain platforms just because like whatever, it's wow. aggressive or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, you must be getting the censorship from the fucking, the sex stuff, the like people saying wild stuff, actual crime stuff. Yeah. Like, what do you think's the most thing? And do you not get to take it down just because you're super careful? The sex stuff, for sure, in terms of, like, titles and stuff. Like, I had a fucking really viral interview with this dude, Rico Strong, who's this fucking legendary porn star. And, uh, I mean, realistically, the whole interview is just, like, him talking about fucking chicks. Like, (laughs) we we got it monetized, and it got to, like, 300,000 views. It feels like whenever they're really cruising they'll get hit at some point uh, you know and like uh that that kind of sucks because it stops the growth but then like all the clips 
from the interview are, are fucking going crazy and a lot of them are insane with the titles it's like blatantly just about sex but like there there's this guy that i fucking was dming with or no i i don't think i ever answered his dms but he runs a, a shit porn site basically like a shit. oh like a gr- fucking girls eating shit and like you come know, on getting fucked with shit and all this kind of stuff and he was what you know a guy that runs that i don't know him but he was dming me and his whole twitter is videos of girls doing sex shit with with poop and i uh <laughs> He was DMing me for a while, and I fucking I don't think I responded. And then I was thinking about it, and I'm like, German. I need to have that guy on the podcast. Like, yeah. I'm, I have a lot of questions for this guy. <laughs> yeah. But then I was thinking about it. it was like, I hope that he's capable of and like able to have the conversation in a way where we don't. Well, he's like, not just pitching it the whole time. But where we don't say eating shit like those <laughs> yeah, yeah. words. Like, if he were able to talk about it, like. <laughs> And then she consumes the, yeah, the yeah, waste. Yeah. Well, I feel like you could say eating shit figuratively right? all day. But I feel like once it starts to go like multiple hundreds of thousands yeah. of views, it's very much, much more likely that it's going to get reviewed. And it's like, if you never are super explicit about it, but I mean, I don't even know if that's possible. How is that possible? So yeah. the bottom line is you are super careful about it all. No, not at all. I won't change the content that we talk about at all. Like I'll have any conversation with anybody about pretty much anything, but then- in terms of like the title and stuff is where I find myself having to be kind of careful. Yeah, you really, you can bury the lead or you can fake the lead, yeah. But we had an episode the other day where a girl kept screaming at my co-host Sharp and calling him a faggot over, and you fucking faggot, like she's mad as fuck saying it like that to him. And uh, I asked my YouTube rep, I'm like, should I censor that? And he's just like, yes. And then we got demonetized anyway, so I don't really know like <laughs> yeah. how much of a difference that. But would you don't. Make. You're not getting strikes though. You're just no. I just kind of just turns orange. Yeah, I won't hold it against you if you censor me saying that there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a word that begins with F and ends with T. <laughs> I, it's not I, fiat. I feel like you're allowed to. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the rules are, and I feel like no one does. They're making it up as they go along, no, which yeah. is, I think, what most people have a problem with, where you're just like the most annoying part, especially with like you know all the vaccine stuff and whatever. It was like, wh- why would you? Like you could, le- that's a conspiracy thing that I always talk about. It's like you could legitimately say, "Hey, I have this conspiracy where I think that you know human beings don't exist, and yeah. I think that you know there's actually forty moons, right. and it could be anything you want." But there's just like you can't talk about these three conspiracies, and it's like all it does is make everyone be like, "Well, now those are the only three conspiracies that I really right. want to talk about." I got a strike back in the day because my girl was stroking my dick through my jeans, and I showed that. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even think about it at the time, but it's like you could see like the outline of my boner, and she's all like this, like, nice. and that did it. Or like, Isn't I remember there like naked yoga and shit. You've done that, right, with your buddy? You yeah. Your <laughs> the first time I had Schultz on, we talked about terrorism for like five minutes, and I got age restricted or some shit. Which like this is like early days of YouTube. Like it's just so random. Like I have episodes that are filthy with girls and stuff yeah. that never get and demonetized nothing. for some reason. Yeah, dude, I was thinking that you have like the perfect life hack where instead of DMing a girl being like, yo, you want to fuck? You mm. DM a girl and you're like, want to collab? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Do you want to come on my platform? Do you want to do an interview? <laughs> but you know what I do? Because like... That's so funny. And plug go, talk is and half... the scene. Plug <laughs> talk's half scene. and half with me and my girl, right? So for yeah. those who don't know, plug talk, we, we interview girls and then we fuck them afterwards. But then my, pa- <laughs> my Patreon and the No Jumper one is like... We just talk to them. They show some titties. Sometimes they masturbate, do some shit like that. You can do that on Patreon? Okay, no masturbating or sex on Patreon. So then we also have OnlyFans, which is kind of confusing that we have OnlyFans that has everything and a Patreon that has most of it, whatever. But like uh, that, like (laughs) usually when I hit a girl up, because like again, plug talk is 50 50, me and my girl. And I, I think like, oh, this girl's viral. I'm like, no, come on the Patreon first so that I can like. Figure you out, get a feel for then you. We'll find out if you're gonna get the big views. Yeah, get get 100 percent of the money. Even at, usually, we end up asking the girl, or like one of my co-hosts will always be like, "Would you fuck Adam? Would you do? Would you porn on plug talk with Adam?" And so, like, that's always like a nice way to enter into it. So I don't really have to tell my girl because our thing too on plug talk is we mostly interview like big name porn stars. So I have like my friends and shit who hit me up and they're sending me like some girl who is like the hottest girl at the bar in North Dakota and they're like she wants to do plug talk and she has like five followers and I'm just like she would have to be so otherworldly hot for it to be worth it for us because no the, choice the thing this. that moves the needle for us is like big names and like you yeah. know or, or or maybe it could be a chick that nobody's ever heard of but she got to be like insanely hot you know. 
What was the, have you ever had one where you did it and the girl was like mad about it and was, or not mad, but she was kind of like, ah, you know, I don't want to air that or something like that, where you got into like, from me banging her or just me interviewing her? Not from you banging her, like, or yeah, from the interview or whatever, but you've ever had any trouble with it? I, like I, my, I guess what I'm getting at is I'm like, I know that a lot of these types are like loose cannons mm. in the like porn industry. Have you ever had any like, you not know, yet, issues? Honestly, not yet, but like. I mean, we had like a escort come on the podcast the other day and she had done like soft white underbelly, which is this other channel that like interviews a lot of crackheads and porn, like porn stars, escorts, whatever. And he's like a really nice guy and he just lets the people talk. And then she came on my platform and we were asking her like hard questions. Like we were really kind of just ribbing her, I guess you could say, like really like trying to get her to ask her about the Middle East. Yeah. Well, I asked her about <laughs> the IRS. I'm like, tell yeah, me yeah. about your taxes. And she is so fucking wow. mad afterwards about that and stuff. And like, she's just been like, like I blocked her, but like her story for the past few weeks has just been like nonstop talking shit, but it's just about the interview. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. I mean, we have like forms that all the girls have to film and like pretty much our whole interaction is filmed together. So it's That's like, huge. there's not really like much that they could say. You okay. Know? If a Basically guy like the Johnny Carson for only fans. It, it is a jo- <laughs> you're a Johnny Carson. If you're okay. If you're a guy that starts dating girl and y- you suspect she might be an escort, I feel like the number one sign is that you know lots of fancy shit you know not a good job mm. how could you could you spot that can you spot that very early on so i'm always and what would you what what would you tell guys are the things to spot i'm always like cautious because it's like a lot of only fans girls could be making six figures a month so it's like if they're at nice restaurants and they're on some island and they're you know uh-huh. they got all this designer shit it's like they could easily afford that but then yeah definitely i also suspect that they're escorts because it's like <laughs> you know but I mean, for a normal girl, not so. No, like, if yeah. this is for oh. a, not for you, for like a normal guy. The, mm. I feel like the fancy bags and no real. You're not really sure how this yeah, happened. No, I have that one. alert in my head that is like, why do you own that? If you, I do, you, too. yeah. Where like, if you seem like you have too much money, or like you seem like you're rocking all this nice fucking uh-huh. designer shit and stuff, for sure, I'm thinking about it. But I mean, I, I think the biggest one is like, do they have Instagram photos in really nice restaurants or in foreign places? And there's no dudes. That's the biggest one. If they're there with their boyfriend, then it makes total sense. But how many girls are really going to fucking Sandro pay by themselves? And they're not (laughs) posting a photo with the the John. Or they're there with their girlfriends and then they post a photo together. But I know tons of girls who are like huge ones. See, I knew Uh, he was gonna have a good one. I know girls who are fucking like escorts who are also porn stars and they post a fucking photo at a really, really nice restaurant just showing the table. Uh huh. where's the guy? He's probably Uh in the bathroom. Like Uh he probably dipped out for a second. I mean, yeah. Yes, that's that's the perfect one. Yeah, yeah I feel like you, you would know after because a lot of girls in the porn world escorting is just fun to them because it's like they they so have the pick of the litter of what fucking dudes they want to hang out with that they still kind of feel like they're not escorting because they're, yeah. they're getting money out these dudes, but. You they know, it's like met they, up with him anyways, you know, celebrity or the, something. Yeah, the idea of fucking dudes for free for a lot of girls it just seems like a fucking waste of time once they start really getting money off. I of mean, it. you're getting money off the guy one way or another, right? <laughs> but I don't know because most girls won't really talk about the escorting shit. Like they, oh, because it's not legal. Or even if they do it, they just know that it's kind of like unseemly and people don't want to hear about oh, it. Oh, it'll or, hurt the other thing. You know, or like it's below. Yeah. It's like yeah, the the in the in the hierarchy. OnlyFans is like they're just like no, I'm just like a model. Almost yeah, the OnlyFans girls, a lot of them, not my girl or me, that they think that they're better than the porn star girls uh-huh. because they do make way more money and they YouTubers. don't have to do shit. It's way easier. <laughs> and then like even the porn stars kind of look down on the ones who escort a little mm. bit. Some of them, you know, some people are more open minded, but there's definitely a lot of that. Because something below. Escort? I mean, if you're escorting, you're taking risk. Yeah. You know, there's no risk doing OnlyFans realistically, and porn the risk is pretty minimal. But if you're going to a fucking dude's hotel room. You could be beaten, murdered tonight, and everybody knows it. And, that's and if you're rich, why are you in that situation? Exactly, yeah. But some girls just take it to the fucking limit, and especially the well, girls. Especially there, a lot of them are, you know, like I said, pretty like wild yeah. drug addicts. Yeah, and the girls who really like want to kick it with like top dudes too. I mean, if you want to like play that game of trying to get to the top of the pyramid of spending time. How do with- I get to Epstein's Island yeah. not as a prostitute? <laughs> that- I want to be on the, on the <laughs> flight logs. Yeah, that's how you get to the top one. Yeah. But what was the, the funniest one was when you did, I don't know this whole story, but you did like, so you and Danny Mullen somehow co- like concocted this fucking <laughs> Dude, 
he was <laughs> so Dave, we've had Dave on the podcast. Love Dave. And yeah, he's the best. But like, dude, I, I yeah, I hung out with him. He came to my show with his whole squad, and we put one of his boys on stage. I feel comfortable telling the story now because it's it's there's enough it, space. There's been between. enough time, and the girl doesn't seem mad at us anymore. But basically, like, he had this friend fucking Stoby or some shit, <laughs> this little shrimpy motherfucker, and he he like his big idea was like, oh, this guy wants to do porn can you find a girl who you're down to have fuck him? And so we hit up this girl that we're friends with who's really cool, and we we told her the idea. is like, this guy's a civilian, but are you down to fuck him? It's almost like kind of when girls do, like, the fuck a fan contest. Like, will you fuck this random dude as part of a yeah. plug talk thing because we think it'll be funny, and Danny Mullen will do a vlog and whatever. Like, we thought this was such a great idea, and then... <laughs> Danny's such a schemer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he shows up. This. He's drunk, like, too drunk. His dick is fucking minuscule. He's got like this little like three inch curved dick. Not a good piece. <laughs> and like he's got like a fucking herpy on his lip. Oh. And the girl is like she's a friend of ours, and I fucking felt horrible. Like fucking like I. I he actually, promised her a nice dick. To be honest, it still seemed funny. No she told him he had to wear a condom, which is like I don't think that was planned on it. I yeah, think he wore a condom. T- that's tough when you're already having trouble getting it up. Yeah, too, man. and toss then, that into the mix. And he's just too drunk. And then <laughs> yeah. and okay. All that and he's not supposed to be drunk in the first place too, but we didn't really think he was that drunk. But he kept. I can to, get being like, if I'm going to do porn for the first time, you're like, I'm going to have a get a couple of them down the hatch. Yeah, but a couple of them is is you know probably acceptable. If everybody knows you're wasted, then this is a problem, you know, on yeah. on set. And he he kept trying to put his finger in her ass, and it's like, a you don't put your finger in a girl's ass in porn unless. That's discussed beforehand because girls are usually like clean. Would you shit ever out. do like a ten? When you know how they do the ten crack commandments, like you do the ten porn commandments. That is a smart <laughs> idea. Yes, I would like to do that for sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll produce it. It could just be ten commandments. It doesn't have to go to ten crack commandments. It could just, you know, no, I said were, porn commandments. But you know, there are ten commandments. Okay, yeah. But, oh, uh, what? There, the original one was there was the, the stone tablets and Moses and shit. Oh, right? that's yeah. true. But I'm thinking of a rap song. Yeah, I like how you you go right to beat <laughs> notorious B.I.G. Yeah, but. uh so then, I mean, that, like the fact that he tried to put his finger in her ass once is bad. The fact that he tried to do it two times is like really bad. And he could barely stay hard. She's having a hard time keeping his tiny little shrimp dick in her in the first place. And then like, it was just, we just stopped it. And like, we just didn't put it out. And I asked him like, I, I, I think I said, don't. He's the Talk most about, reasonable I think, guy. I don't think he put out the behind the scenes or anything, but then they talked about it on his podcast. So, yeah, it was really bad, and I was like really worried that she was gonna hate us forever because she's actually like a pretty good friend of ours. Uh-huh. But I, I don't think I've seen her since. But she she was she's a dope person, so it actually really sucked. And then on Danny's podcast, they brought him out. And, like, he was mad at me because I said he had a tiny dick. And, like, <laughs> he does have a fucking tiny... Like, I mean, by porn standards, your dick is not even in the... Like, you could never be a porn star. You right. Know? Like, a six-inch a six inch dick, a seven-inch dick is still pretty small for porn. I feel like porn is kind of like eight, nine, ten becomes, like, when you can do porn. He had, like, probably a four-incher on him. And, like... He's, the balls on the I don't I don't, yeah. I don't I'm not sure if I met so this bad. guy or not but yeah the balls on this guy to be like let's get this out there for the public. It seems like he's one of those things where he goes yeah I'm gonna say like just to impress the guys and you go like oh this is really happening huh yeah like, <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck I think just that, like drink that's why Danny like, probably got the beers down the hatch he's pretty good at coaxing people into doing stuff I think too that's one of his skills <laughs> yeah I'm sure Danny was real innocent in the alcohol consumption on that one <laughs> <laughs> fuck but, yeah. dude Swolby. Oh, okay, fuck you, Swole. And he was wearing a wrestling singlet. Love it. Oh, fuck And, off. dude, he, like, pull, he like ripped it open so his little dick could be on. Oh. <laughs> and he had all his, his wrestling chain. Like, he had all these medals that he won for, like, collegiate wrestling. Yeah. And he had them all on, and they're, like, making a shitload of noise. And I think our audio guy made him take them off because it was too loud. And Do you, think, so of, do you think that there's, like... Uh, rappers that have leaked their own you know there'll be a few of those guys who was the guy was it nelly that like his sex tape like accidentally came out on his instagram page oh yeah i didn't see it but i heard about it yeah. it's like that's i think david spade had a joke about this and he was like you want to see hollywood really scramble have a sex tape leap with a small dick it's always a guy with like eight inches yeah, like, how'd that get out there yeah, that was uh, jamal murray <laughs> I feel like not that many rappers have had their dicks leaked. Like Lil Pump and Tyga leaked their dicks on purpose on OnlyFans. Tyga's another one I'm thinking of. Okay, but then maybe that wasn't it. Then. But there's there's probably others. But like I don't know. It's weird how like people don't really seem like they care. 
that much. Like, dicks I, aren't that I big haven't a deal. seen people talking about Tyga's dick being on OnlyFans that much. Like I, that probably bums him out. I would about think it. that there would be like diagrams of it on Twitter from people who are like deeply involved. He in thought it was yeah. bigger. Well, the Jamal Murray, I don't even know the basketball player. No, Jamal, the game Jamal was Murray. the one where he always he did the fucking oldest trick in the book where he clearly was fucking kind of hard and then pushed it down and act like it was soft. Yeah. Then, <laughs> oh, yeah. he, he wasn't fooling anybody with that trick. That's, <laughs> I should do that, honestly. That's oh, it's the, sick. It's the easiest trick in the book. <laughs> And it was like, and he was just like acting like, oh yeah, well, oh. yeah. and he was just like, no, everyone knows what's going on here, pal. <sighs> yeah, everybody was talking about his dick print for a while. He probably got so much pussy off that. <laughs> Game was probably doing all right though. Anyway, damn, if I had like a six pack, I might do that. But I feel like if I did it right now, it'd be too much. Like, hey, look, I'm chubby and I got a dick. <laughs> <laughs> do you think like I don't know? You're tapped in this stuff more than I am. Like the okay, well, I mean, I guess it's sort of like a comedy related thing, but like uh, with like. Okay, with Kanye West and you know Pete Davidson and all that stuff, you've never you never had Kanye West on, right? No. Would that be sick? Yeah, but I've talked so much shit about him that it seems unlikely. What have you said? <laughs> Basically, just that he's dead wrong in the whole fucking Kim situation for the most part, and you know, definitely like just talked about how I didn't like his fucking albums, like recent albums and stuff, and. Just kind of talked about him being a dickhead to a lot of his former collaborators and stuff. So I definitely am not. You like, didn't like spinning out out of control, Kanye. No, and I mean, I just felt like Do I. Do you was, think it was funny a little bit? Oh yeah, definitely. But I mean, I I really like. I, I don't think I could be a broadcaster and sit up there and be like, yeah, this shit's great. Like he's just so clearly losing it and being shitty to his ex wife and kids and everything. And I'm not saying that his right. ex wife is like not guilty, but I just thought like. He handled himself in such a stupid ass way, and and I mean now you see it that he's like taking a year off or whatever. Like I feel like he kind of knows that he spiraled out. He's always on the verge of spiraling out. Well, this is what I kind of want to ask you about it. Where I like, you know, it's kind of like I always when I'm watching, like if you're with your like a chick watching reality shows or whatever, right? And she'll be like, like buying into the whole thing, and I'm just like I know TV too well. Where you're just like, no, this is fake. Like, or you'll see Hollywood marriages, yeah. or you know, influencer marriages, and you're just like, they're both doing this because it's making them more famous. Like, yeah. show me one where it didn't help them both, you know? Right. And I'm I'm kind of like that. And then for this thing, I'm like, am I fished in? Like, they're all fucking in on this thing, and everyone kind of well, inherently knows. Like, who in this thing didn't sell more things? It's like, you know, it seems like. Kanye West, you know, his big release happened right then. Yeah, Pete always. Davidson became the biggest, them. you know, person in the world. Like, am I fished in? You know, the fact that his breakdowns align with his album releases for sure. Yeah, well, they, al they always do. Like, remember he was like, I'm bankrupt yeah. like four and years ago. He'll go ago. quiet for two years between albums and not be on social media. And then he comes back with an album and it just so he's always the, Yeah, he's the biggest. He's got a MAGA commercial. hat on. He's like, you're like, is that MAGA hat have anything to do with it? Yeah, he's got an album coming out the next day. It's the MAGA hat the day before. <laughs> it's just like, that's why I'm just like, am I fucking... A sheep, right? But I kind of feel like <laughs> yeah, you're I feel like that is that is just him all the time, and that he just chooses to share it with the world when he's got an album coming out. You okay, know? like because I feel like he's like breaking down and losing his shit. Like because he comes <laughs> back with so much to talk about from his private life when he does return. You know, like yeah, I, I think it's kind of easy for him to toggle between like social media Kanye and just wilding out in his private life kanye or and then also pro I, I don't feel like he's ever on social media when he's in a good mental space it's always <laughs> when right. he's going through some we, shit. you know and we all know these people it's like again i thought it was funny and you know he sometimes he makes a good point and then he makes a bad point or whatever right mm. but it'll be like we all i'm, I'm a million people that are exactly like this on facebook just right. that it gets two likes you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. no we yeah. know we know a comedian in canada yeah a hundred. we know one specifically because like i could not imagine ever saying anything publicly about my relationship because me and my girl have always been like that where it's like even if we were going through the gnarliest breakup i would not let on on social media i just don't think it's like I just don't think me there's neither. anything that would make me want to go to that level. Like, it's like our relationship is not about clout or, or our public image. So I'm never going to involve that because I don't want to fucking listen to anyone's opinions about you or whatever. And also, like, these people always get back together, right? Like, I guess, honestly, if our relationship was more rocky publicly, it probably would make us more famous, you yeah. know, because it would just people would talk about it and stuff. But I don't know. Like, to me, like. Yeah, I totally agree, though, because I know a lot of normal people. When I go back to look at Facebook and I see people I went to high school with just living their life for, like, four likes on Facebook, <laughs> just talking about shit. Like, I know a dude I used to work at the grocery store with who's always talking about he's either, like, clean on heroin or back on heroin. 
and oh he just talks God. about it on Facebook. And like, I, I I log into Facebook like every couple months, and I just see it, and I'm just like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> we have one guy who was from a small town that I can never, I can't say his name, but we 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 all send screenshots of this guy's profile like every three days, and mm. every day he posts stuff like. Little tired today. Might go to bed early yeah. and like just nonstop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, I just uh, just ate a hot dog. Was pretty good. It's like stuff <laughs> like that. It's incredible. Everybody, yes, exactly. Yeah, every group of dudes has a group chat where there's some <laughs> random guy that is, is not a, famous I even met that this they're guy. tearing apart. <laughs> I this have a bunch. Clobbered. I have a bunch of group chats <laughs> with a bunch of different people, and that's why I read somebody say it's like, no matter who you are. It, there is a group chat of people out there talking shit about you. <laughs> and that's kind of trippy to think about is that every time you take a L, there's like at least a few different group chats that are like, look at this stupid fuck. I and know. You should be so lucky to be famous enough that it happens on Twitter as well. But even if you're not on that level, yeah, yeah, yeah. there are group chats talking yeah, about you. I yes, know. For sure. <laughs> fucking yeah, you just you look fat in the grocery store in your <laughs> hometown and a bunch of fucking hens are clucking in their yeah. group chat. Oh, it's uh, shit. And then the other one was, and we're going to get out of here in a couple. Uh, I think uh, yeah we'll believe in 30 we'll leave at 40 we'll get over to the stand so cool. but the okay so with um, there was t the first thing was do you f like I feel like there's these people that I always try to kind of avoid where the biggest one I avoid where is where you go every person that this person was friends with they're all enemies now yeah is there any ones where you're just like I gotta fucking get this guy out of the circle yeah well that I that it can say the name, I guess. Oh, that can say the name? No, definitely not. Because I usually cut people off and then never talk about them again. But uh, definitely, yeah. like, there's been times in my life. Because then you'd be them if you did it that, that way. Yeah. yeah, because like you definitely, like, run into that, though, where you'll see somebody who's, like, 35 and their fucking team around them is brand fucking new. And you're just, like... <laughs> right. just, but But also, I feel it because it's, like, A... I have lost countless friendships because I tried to hire people, you know? And then what do you they, mean? Like, I hire somebody to do a job, they suck, and then... You have to fire them. Yeah, because, like... It's very tough. People I'm always skeptical to get a girl I'm dating to do stuff because yeah, I'm like, oh, if this yeah, doesn't yeah, work, yeah. it's going to be really bad. Because for me, it's like, once you are a bad employee, I lose sight of what what is going on in your life. Are we friends, et cetera? If you're a good employee, then I'm going to be fucking talking now to you about how your relationship's tighter, going, yeah. how's your kid, et cetera. But it's really, like, I, I've noticed it myself. I just stop thinking about you as a friend, and I start thinking of you as an employee that I need to get rid of. And I always think that we're going to be able to be cool, but people, like, just get too wrapped That's up in there. That's super tough to be cool yeah. with someone after you fired them. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, and but honestly, sometimes. But, but you still do it. You but still if they hire go friends. on to better things, then it's not that hard. And they might look at you being like, "Yeah, yeah. I was, I fucked up there." Yeah, like there's been people who work for me, and then we fire them, but they still do some content here and there for us. Okay, and it's like we stay on good terms. And but like the person I'm thinking in my head went on to become like a very like not like huge, but he's making a good amount of money on Twitch, and me firing him basically just like forced him to become more serious about that and I still support him and we still see each other and we're cool and stuff so that's like you know that, that's that been one that's been all good yeah that's the happy ending I don't know well you said okay so you said you liked maybe you didn't say you liked it but like I know you had kind of like a a somewhat public thing like in a fight with Machine Gun Kelly right <laughs> yeah yeah and but more so I was saying like I don't know do you because you sort of alluded to a second ago where you were like, you know, 6 9 could have done something like that. Whereas to me, you know, people always talk about appropriation. Right. And I like a lot of times I do get, you know, anyone can get when, you know, when corporations get involved and try to steal it, whether it's racial or not. You know right. what I mean? To me, when he started doing the pop punk thing, to me, that was like. The m probably most appropriation I've ever seen. He's appropriating yeah. your culture of a genre. He was appropriating. He was appro <laughs> but uh, not only was he appropriating my culture, it's like he didn't even understand that it was like kind of a corny culture. Yeah. It was like he was appropriating stuff that even the people that do it kind of know they're like making fun of it a little bit. Like everything's tongue in cheek. And then on top of that, it's like so then the uh, the thing you were pretending to be before was fake. Like right. so, if you're not, if now you're like, oh, I'm actually this. So to me, that was like the, a master class in like actual appropriation. But think about how funny it is that he's a white guy who started as a rapper and then has to resort to pop punk when you know traditionally pop punk has been ninety fucking five percent white guys, right? Yeah. And yeah. Like, but it's so weird to me because when MGK the left rap to do punk rock or 
rock, whatever the fuck it's called. I mean, we've seen other people do this. Like, like you know, Post Malone was more of a rapper at one point and then kind of became more of like a singer or rock dude yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I think he's cool. Yeah, yeah. He's generally like past the sniff test or whatever. But that's a good way of putting in it. In general, you just feel like that's a big deal and the rap community would probably have something to say about it, right? I don't think they know. I don't think anybody in rap, like nobody listened to him in the rap world really from my perspective. So then he pivots to this shit and it just felt like the... the he had a moment with the Eminem thing again. Yeah, but I think that's what made him really decide that he had to do something because he put out another album right after that and I remember listening to it and giving it a really bad review and I think that that's probably why he hates me. Uh, but <laughs> the Eminem thing was kind of like his last blast. But he recently had like news come out that said MGK is thinking of doing a rap comeback and I mean, I just... After all the I mean, the pop punk stuff, it's like, can you imagine a guy being like that was just a pop punk guy, like without being the rapper first, being like, you know, the singer from like Good Charlotte's gonna be like, oh, I'm a rapper now. Right. Like, but then, like the singer from Good like Charlotte, seriously, a if he becomes yeah, a rapper, like, rapper, my money is on nobody caring. But and he yeah, also chose to so. do this at a time when somebody like Juice World or somebody like Lil Peep is coming out and blowing up and basically like incorporating a lot of sonic elements from indie rock and punk rock and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, it was all meshing together. But Machine Gun Kelly went full rock dude. He didn't go like, you know, rock style rap. And he went like he did, like if you were making a movie, like a children's movie, and you had like the girl's older boyfriend played in this band and you had to make a song for the movie for like the, the and you made like a caricature of a pop punk song, mm. like that's what he's doing. Right. It seems like a corporation that was like, oh, let's do like a commercial. Uh, we have a pop punk band playing in the commercial. I don't pay that much attention to like the rock crowd, but it, it seems sometimes like they would have more to say about MGK coming up in their little world, but probably like like I have seen tweets that have 50,000 likes and shit making fun of him for stuff like you know the fucking uh, fell in love with an emo girl song and shit like that like I definitely see MGK getting dunked on by like the pitchfork crowd and shit like that but yeah, I, I feel like he's just a celebrity now yeah that's like really so. like the slot he's in is just he's just like he's married to a famous chick and yeah. people Doing are like you're like shit. you're like who's machine gun kelly lots of Cringe people know machine. do you know one song of his no but, right but i mean it seems like people listen to his music i don't know who the fuck they are but TikTok, like talk young maybe? young girls and so shit, what happened though. with you and him that he just was mad because you kept talking so i'm at rolling him? loud in 2019 i believe and uh basically like i've never spoken to mgk i i've never seen him in real life to me I've talked shit about him, but I mean, you're fucking Mr. Famous ass dude, right? Like, I don't even know if you know what I look like. You know, I'm I'm always kind of in a weird place where it's like I am well known, but I don't really know if like specific people are gonna know me. You know, and I don't like to assume that people are gonna know me. But either way, I'm doing interviews for Rolling Loud, and I'm standing there with Faze Banks interviewing him, going back and forth, and I see out of the corner of my eye, I see MGK stomping towards me, but like. <laughs> I'm was he wearing all his pink stuff? He was wearing some gay ass stuff. I don't know, but <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm seeing him coming out of the corner of my eye, and I'm but I'm doing this interview, and I don't want to like just turn and face him because it's like I don't want to like show that I'm concerned about him coming up. But like right as he comes toward, uh, when he gets close, and I have a security guard, which is like one homie of mine from Long Beach, who realistically could beat up probably 99 percent of people, but MGK has like a couple of like really big security guards who look like fucking bodybuilders you know like right behind him and he gets right well no i i, I just kind of like reach the mic up to him i'm like oh it's mgk and this is the part that was caught in video and he smacks the mic like smacks my hand and then he turns around and walks away that's the part that was caught on video but then he came back up like two minutes later and was like i forget what he's saying i don't want to like attribute any words to him but the gist of it was like do you why are you talking shit about me and i was like I just talk about music, dude. Like, I, it's nothing personal if I don't like your fucking music. And, he's, and I'm like, what did I even say that made yeah, you mad? Yeah, and like, that shouldn't be that surprising. I was like, either. what did I even say that made you mad? Like, we could have a conversation about it. And he's like, you know what you said. <laughs> he's like a chick. And then he walked know. away. And it's like, bro, I don't give a fuck if you're famous and rich or whatever. Like, I have to be objective. And it was weird, too, because, like, a lot of my friends, like, fake industry friends, obviously, but, like, you know, YouTubers <laughs> and musicians and stuff are, like, kind of, like, over by where he was standing before he marched over towards me and they all just watched this happen and they all fuck with me but it's like MGK is about to go on stage and I like watch a lot of them sort of waddle on over there and like 
I don't hold it against them because I don't really take a lot of those friendships seriously, you know. But you're it, saying you you saw where you stand in the hierarchy that kinda, day, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the cloud hierarchy for sure. <laughs> and then like uh, you know, it was weird because I'm just like thinking like, damn, like y'all are dick riders. Like y'all are actually <laughs> pretending you think this dude is tight. Right. Like, y'all are a bunch of fucking marks. But you know, like I mean, I don't really like to to be real. I kind of feel like my whole like rap like clout character i'm doing is it's like i'm fucking larping in that shit because i just don't fucking care that much and that's why like when a rapper comes at me or whatever it's like bro i don't fucking care like i'm a dad and a bmx rider yeah like, but also all that's this shit is like funny to me dude. a little bit too i mean you know it's like it's a very tight spot to get in if you like started to sort of put out this image where you're like i actually am no you don't want to talk shit about me and then you know yeah. then anything happens you're kind of like but my whole thing and have to fight or something yeah my whole thing and <laughs> that was like okay like i've talked shit about you what are you gonna do you're gonna kill uh -huh. me you're gonna punch me in the face right now because if you want to punch me in the face right now on camera i will accept yeah the, yeah the that'll be your new clout. <laughs> but then you know but but he didn't even he never addressed <laughs> it on social media. He's never that. said anything to me. You know, he's like, he totally left it alone. I've had a bunch of girls on my podcast talk about fucking him. He never responds, but he just couldn't help himself when he saw me that one day. And basically, I have reason to believe there was like an area that I go to exercise, and some girl told me that he lives in this area. And I was just thinking about it one day, like, what are the odds? And I don't know what house is his, but there's a uh, chance that I'm marching past his house from time to time. And I'm just <laughs> oh, like, that must piss him off. I'm just thinking like, oh. would he ever come out and fight me in the yard? <laughs> like, and he's like, is he going to fight me? Is there going to be a security guard? Is he going to attack me with a bat? Like it's time for Ross to fight. Yeah, should I be strapped up walking around the neighborhood doing cardio? Dude, I don't he does know. A pop punk diss track, <laughs> you know, and I'm 22. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know, man, but like, I don't know. It's like, People always are like, would you be cool with them? I'm like, I don't feel like you can really be cool with someone when the whole thing in the first place was just basically you saying that they're corny. Because, like, where do you go from there, right? And especially when you were kind of doing that. But we do, we'll probably have to get you to the stand. So I have to do two quick ones. One, for, we're Toronto boys. Is Drake the biggest rapper in the world right yes, now? Yes, of course. That's our hands down. And it's going to be a long time before somebody's bigger than him because he hits so many different markets. You know, like when he drops, it's like. Is Toronto the hub of rap for the universe? Always will be, always has been. Of course, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just like. Even if Lil Baby is a hotter rapper than Drake, maybe at a time like now, I, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say. But like, even if he is. All these R&B fans still listen to Drake. All these normal ass people still listen to Drake that have no fucking clue who Lil Baby is. Uh -huh. So it's like, it's kind of hard to imagine exactly when that'll happen. But you know, now- I remember when he used to drive his Acura up on Morningside. Yeah. You'll, you'll, <laughs> you'll start to see like little hints of like somebody becoming bigger than Drake over the next couple of years, I think, because he's kind of reaching that like prime of his career. Which, He'll become Jay-Z, sort of. Yeah, he, he has to at some point kind of like fade into a different role, right? You know, uh -huh. we just are like waiting. Like this, if, if another Drake came out tomorrow, we would see it kind of happen quickly, you know? Uh-huh. It's kind of hard to imagine. And I, I go, it'll okay. be it'll be the best fall off ever because he's just such a genius with how he like does he'll his become career. A he'll become a movie star they, or something. Yeah, even he'll if be he, the like, rock. Even if he kind of falls off, he's gonna start doing so many other things. I because I feel like he doesn't do the movie thing because he knows that if he becomes That'll a movie star him. right now, that it's not really like a good thing for his music career, and he's uh -huh. solely focused on his music career. Every other rapper who becomes big starts to get interested in other things. He's the one person that basically is like, no, I'm making music. That's all I'm doing. All I care about is being the number one rapper for as long as possible. I love her, boy. He's very singular. And I got to ask this question because my buddy, Paul Thompson, is like a comedian from Toronto. He's like a fan. Uh, his favorite guy that he just like won't stop talking about how good he is is Pop Can. Is he sick? <laughs> That's the question. Is Popkin sick? Is Popkin sick? I don't know anything <laughs> about that shit, honestly. Like, he doesn't uh, even know who Popkin. The Jamaican is? guy? I hear about it, but I don't listen to fucking dance hall or whatever. That so shit it's some is, weird or... shit. Okay. No, I mean it's super popular, and we had a, a dude do, do a vlog in in the UK. This dude Seshi did a vlog for us out there with him one time. But I, I mean, I don't listen to fucking world music. <laughs> you never, <laughs> yeah. When you were in the hard car, you never got into any of the reggae stuff. Like you were never into. Uh, Toots and the Maytails never? No. I used to listen to Ska, though. I used to be in... I, I used to skank. Now we're talking. In 1997, I went to some skanking yeah, ass shows. Yeah, I, I, 
Yeah, that was me. I had a suit. No. <laughs> dude, if those videos of you skanking got up, your fucking career would be over, dude. If we, <laughs> he's Even in the, the moshing. No, but he's in the checkered suit, like straight up. <laughs> dude, I, I seen a dude. <laughs> to Real Big Fish. <laughs> beep, 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 that beep, was my band, beep, too. Beep, yes. beep, beep. I, I bought a Real Big Fish CD at Walmart, and the swears were all bleeped Nike out. Shirt on. I, I fucking saw it and was like, oh, I remember that band logo and shit but i don't know these are my friends yeah uh, they're probably on some compilations that i used to listen to and shit but, but um drinking for 11 I that's have, just what i'll do that oh, sounds familiar i don't know but uh, i i used to have uh or what, what the fuck i was gonna say oh uh, there's like people have sent me pictures of me standing by mosh pits <laughs> When Mosh I was like 19 fine. or 20, where I'm just kind of like standing there wearing a fucking Zoo York shirt, yeah, and like some <laughs> goofy ass like cargo pants, and like I'm 19, and like thank God there aren't photos of me actually like <laughs> mo- oh that, that would be <laughs> floor punching, but like a video of me moshing for real would be moshing so would be way better for you than skanking, dude. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Adam, has the, cool. Adam has the suspenders on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like hardcore has skanking. They just call it two stepping, but it's basically right. like fast paced skanking, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Ah, uh, shit. Fuck yeah, dude. This is oh. so sick. I'm glad that you could come by, man. Yeah, my this pleasure, is great. Man. We appreciate it. For sure. I'm 22. No Jumper Podcast and... Mm, plug Talk. Plug Talk. Only Plug Talk.com and then No Jumper on all social media. Yeah, dude. And Adam 22, I guess. Killing the game. Yeah, and we appreciate you fucking oh, thanks hanging out with the New York Thank Edgy you. Boys community. My Woo! pleasure. Let's go. Edge Lords Unite. All right, so we'll go to the stand, and you can catch him on Legion of Skanks, too. All right, peace. Let's do it. Appreciate Bye. you, man. Thank you, everyone, for listening to that episode. And make sure you subscribe, patreon.com slash theboyscast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash theboyscast. And hit us up on the Patreon with any questions. And this has been The Boys Cast. Boys cast, the boys, the fellas, the lads, the bros, the dudes, the homies, the mates, the blokes, the boys cast.